Welcome to the fourteen informational session on the middle school bill. We are in the Raymond Modular. It is October the thirtieth at 6 p.m. And this forum is intended to offer information to residents of Wyndham and of Raymond on the middle school build before the referendum. At the end of the short presentation that the superintendent will um, do for us here shortly, we'll go ahead and do a Q&A session. Um, I, it's my understanding that the school board director, Shar Jewel, will join us here shortly. She's uh, en route. Myself and the select board to answer any questions that you might have outside of the presentation content from the superintendent. Brita, just a little bit of housekeeping. If anybody wants to talk, they have to go to the microphone because it gets picked up on video. And please state your name and where you're from. Thanks. Mr. Howell? Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I think many of you know me. I'm Chris Howell. I'm the superintendent for RC14, and um, I have assembled some slides tonight and some of them from the previous presentations. Um, I understand that really the purpose of tonight and just following people's questions and the things that I've seen as we've led up to referendum uh, to try to answer as many questions tonight. And I know that there's still some things that um, are still some unknowns as we go into this project, and we still have the unknown of whether or not we'll have a referendum that will pass next week. So uh, I want to make sure tonight that we give opportunity for answers, and to the extent that I can give an answer, I will, uh, and to the extent which I need to get back to someone, I will gladly do that by email. Um, I am speaking tonight, which is interesting, um, because I am the, I'm not a voting member of the building committee and I'm not a voting member of a school committee. Uh, I've been charged with working with the RSU and our staff and helping to advise the um, overall building committee on working their way through this process. And so again, I will do my best to answer any questions that you have. I thought it might be helpful just for sake of clarity to be able just to share a few slides tonight um, I have been following, like many of you, conversations on community pages and um, you know, seeing sometimes a correct answer, sometimes seeing an incorrect answer, sometimes seeing information that I don't know where the information came from. Uh, and so trying to make sure that you get the information that you need tonight. Uh, you've heard this, uh, me say this multiple times, and I know there's some people here who've sat through some of my presentations, and I'm sorry if you have. Um, and that this is a bit of a repeat for you, but again, we wanna make sure that you have the information. Uh, this is a process that has been going on for quite a while, and the first application that was submitted to the Maine Department of Education was started in 2016 and took place between 16 and 17 and was submitted, and then finally in 2018, the district was notified that a project would move forward for a new Wyndham Middle School. Uh, and the reason why I bring this up and the reason why I bring up a process is that Maine Department of Education has a school build process. Uh, in the past, uh, 20 years ago when Wyndham High School was built, 20 school districts were being, or 20 schools were being built in a rating cycle, uh, which was amazing. And in fact, earlier when school construction uh, was a whole lot less expensive, uh, as many as 25 buildings might be done in a cycle. Wyndham High School, which we just made the last payment last week for the local portion, uh, is officially paid off on the local side. We still have a state payment coming up. But I know there's some people in the room that were around 2004 when that um, grand opening happened and went through that build process. And I know for Raymond, there were people during the construction process who at that time said, uh, we don't want to send our kids through a Wyndham construction project and sent their kids either to Grain and Gloucester or Westbrook uh, at the time. And so there were some different choices there. But the reason why this is important to mention is that um, within a state construction process, there are state construction steps and there are state construction requirements. And if you want to call it the give to get or to work through the process is that the state is, is investing a significant amount of money in this process as far as building a school, and in this case, building a school for RSU 14. Um, everyone on the community pages is correct. This originally was a Wyndham Middle School project. That was the initial one that was put in. And if for those of you, I know you've done the deep dives into the construction website. Uh, a lot of the work was done solely on Wyndham Middle School. 
But in August of 2021, as we were starting to do kickoff meetings with the Maine Department of Education construction team, which is a team of engineers, architects, as well as some ex-school officials who are responsible for the investment of funds and making recommendations to the Maine State School Board, uh, the comment was made um, that we really need you to go back to Raymond one last time. I know we have, this was all on the heels of withdrawal vote and to see whether or not uh, Raymond would like to be part of this process and whether or not you want to consider that, uh, which then led to, and I know there'll probably be some questions about that tonight, but led to a subsequent discussion with the Raymond Select Board and also a subsequent discussion with the RSU 14 Board, who eventually in November of 21 uh, made the decision to move forward with accepting that and accepting a larger build. So larger than a Wyndham Middle School, uh, but a Wyndham Raymond Middle School and also accepted, uh, which was a something that was not part of the original project, was the inclusion of fifth grade and including fifth grade because Raymond had a 5-8 model, Wyndham did not, but including fifth grade would allow universal pre-K across the district, which was a goal that uh, looking to set forward. We also expect some legislation in the not so distant future that will require districts to do that. So looking forward and some space. But during this process, um, we have gone through uh, designer selection. So picking an architectural firm, which was LaValle Brenzinger. They're out of Manchester and Portland, um, which the committee had a chance to do uh, a district wide capacity study for all of our buildings was conducted. Uh, in addition, a new versus renovation analysis, and um, that has been, I know, posted, so people have had a chance to read through that. Uh, so two years old process on that and being determined on some old construction data. And then also moving through this, we've had the RSU 14 board who has voted on uh, what's called the educational specifications. So what this building's gonna look like as far as serving the population. We've gone through professional development opportunities with both Jordan Small, Wyndham Middle, uh, Manchester School staff. And eventually uh, with the building committee, work through an extensive process of looking at all sorts of different sites in Wyndham and Raymond. <laughs> Uh, as far as where to site a school. Uh, so we've had all these different pieces that have been moving along and including that um, a concept approval, which then lands us on this very simple process that you see up here with all these different pieces, uh, with two recent votes by the Maine State School Board uh, committing funds to this project. Uh, and then where we are right now, which is step 13, which is heading out to uh, referendum. And I know everyone who has voted early has seen the referendum question. Uh, so number one, uh, do you favor the borrowing? In this case, it's $171.5 million uh, for the school. And specifically outlines in the referendum question, the project location, which is 45 acres at 61 Wyndham Center Road, nine additional acres from the town of Wyndham, and then uh, a land swap with the Presumpscot River, Presumpscot River Land Trust. Um, talks about consolidating the two middle schools, which I know tonight there's probably gonna be some questions about that. And then also looking at estimated savings because bringing two middle schools into one and then looking ultimately uh, what are the responsibilities here, which is 130, over 131 million for the state of Maine. And then finally, 39.8 million for a local option that has been recommended by the building committee. And again, tonight I speak for uh, that building committee and I'm speaking for the RSU 14 board and answering on their behalf. Uh, in addition, answering on behalf of many of the staff members who've worked in this process. But uh, the reason why this process is as um, thorough as it is with the due diligence that's done throughout the process is that uh, you have the state of Maine who has agreed at this point, should the referendum pass, to invest over $131 million into Wyndham and Raymond uh, for a new school for middle school students in grades five to eight. And so looking through the process here, um, August of 21 was our kickoff with the architect. Uh, went through a process of gathering information and you can see some of the pieces that are there from site selection to the planning to the programming population projections, 
that took place, uh, looking at possible site designs and what that would look like going to the Maine State School Board for site approval and then looking at all of our different options. And our building committee has been heavily involved with that. The building committee is, is composed of both Wyndham and Raymond residents, both Wyndham and Raymond staff members. Uh, it's also includes some community members from both Wyndham and Raymond who have been looking at what some of these possible solutions are. <coughs> and then ultimately um, they developed a concept design. That concept has been approved by the Maine State School Board. Uh, which is another kind of design step or design process. And if you notice here, we're down in that lower right-hand corner with the local referendum taking place. Um, again, because there's been some questions about, well, what about the site? How did we end up at 61 Wyndham Center Road? Uh, we employed an engineering firm named Stantec, um, and they went through a process with their environmental engineers and also with their mapping um, arm of their uh, company and identified all 35 acre parcels in Wyndham and Raymond and looked at what are the possible sites that we could take a look at. Um, what I have here that I've shown for a map is um, everything that's in Wyndham. In Raymond, um, we had Patricia Ave which um, we took a look at, which was a site that was graciously offered up by the Raymond Select Board. Uh, we also took a look at the current RAS campus, uh, which is about 25 acres, to see if it was possible to site a school there. Uh, in addition, when Raymond became part of this project being voted by the RSU 14 board, sites in both towns then were just limited down to what's the corridor between Jordan Small and Wyndham Middle School or the Wyndham High School campus and really narrowing down what was available within that corridor. Uh, the committee took a deep dive at um, the, I'm trying to think of Enterprise Drive, which is um, not zoned in Wyndham for construction for schools, it's a zone for commercial and for marijuana dispensaries. Took a look at, uh, again, Patricia Ave and did a deep dive into that with the civil engineers. Took a deep dive into um, a piece of property which is at the corner of 115 and 202 in Wyndham and took a look at Wyndham Center Road, looked at the Manchester campus to see if that was a possibility. Looked at another piece of property off of Falmouth Road to see if that was a possibility. Really trying to narrow down uh, what was available. And the building committee uh, took a look, went through, rated each one of those. Not only did they rate it on local pieces, but uh, main state construction. And if anyone really wants to look it up online, there's actually chapter 61 of main statute for school construction, really outlines types of sites that you should be looking for and heavily weigh for factors such as three-phase power, sewer, public water, um, and looking at what transportation infrastructure and other pieces have to be done in order to develop a site. And so I know people have looked at um, you know, some of those metrics and things that we took a look at, but really fell within this. Um, the other spot, and I know some people have asked about why don't you just put a Wyndham Middle School on the Wyndham Middle School campus. Um, this was an early on discussion when it was, when it was a Wyndham only project. Uh, the Wyndham Middle School went through a new versus reno um, process and architect took a look. There was also have been considerable engineering. Uh, Wyndham Middle School has had some structural issues over the years, first of all, with the two, with the gym, and then also with the cafeteria. And for any of you who've ever been in there, they have a big exposed uh, laminated purlins or ceiling joists that have been put together. There's these giant iron rods that are holding the pieces together. It's actually keeping the walls from separating away. Uh, Wyndham Middle School classroom wing, which is, um, if the town of Wyndham decides to take it, I would suggest that that be a piece that they take a really close look at. Uh, has some structural issues with the roofing system, also some structural issues with the walls. So we did take a look at um, a single campus for then, which was a Wyndham Middle School project. And at the time, a couple of different factors. One was the concerns by DOE with the number of students that would be on the campus. 
And number two, there were concerns with um, lost athletic fields and then trying to figure out how we displace. And then for anyone, again, when this was a Wyndham only project, anyone who's ever dropped off a kid on the Wyndham High School, Wyndham Middle School campus in the morning, uh, it is a traffic nightmare in order to be able to do that. So they took a look, deep dive into that and it was determined that time not to be sustainable. Just gonna move on here quickly uh, to give plenty of time for questions. Back on June 12th, and this is going again back to those different pieces, um, went through actually two different approval processes. One is we had a chance to meet with the State Construction Committee and um, they had a chance to pour through the site diagram, had a chance to pour through um, whether or not this was a viable site. We met with the State School Board Construction Committee uh, they went through, went through a process, and then back on July 12th, the full state school board uh, went through, and for 61 Wyndham Center Road, they pledged uh, basically $1.2 million of a $1.5 million purchase price for that particular piece of property. Uh, so ultimately leaving at that point a $300,000 local cost for purchasing the 45 acres, which in the end is actually going to be a 54-acre campus uh, when it's done. I know you've all seen these, so I'm just gonna quickly go through. Uh, yes, it's a large building. There's no question about it. The square footage that has been allocated by the main department of education. Again, we follow a formula for educational specifications uh, and looking at uh, specifically how much square footage per classroom. Uh, we went through a whole spreadsheet analysis that took about four months to complete, which was for every teacher that we have um, how many classrooms do we need? How many square feet do we need? What do we need in intervention spaces, foreign language spaces, STEM, art, physical education, uh, music, all these different components. Uh, in addition, the building committee took a deep dive and made some further recommendations, which included uh, recommending an auditorium as part of this. Uh, we do have a number of students, both Wyndham Middle and Jordan Small have strong drama programs, uh, so including that. But then also looking at um, some outdoor spaces, uh, looking at the ability for a greenhouse. We have strong agricultural programs at Manchester and also at Jordan Small. So continuing that, outdoor classrooms, uh, playgrounds, all sorts of different pieces, basketball courts, play space. Uh, so some of these being locally funded, some of them being state funded as we work. Chris, is your uh, mic on? Yeah. It's green. Okay, sorry. There, people at home can't hear you very well, so that's how we're kind of. And Zoom wasn't up either. So. I got green, and I can push it. I, actually, green goes off. Okay. Do you want me to switch microphone? Actually, I just got louder. Oh, there I you can go. switch mics. All right. Is this any better? So it's he's. You should be okay. It's going out over the TV pine. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead, Chris. I can so, talk louder. No. There you go. <laughs> no, people are texting. They can't get in on. on I can the use Zoom my cafeteria stuff. voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Many years there, but again, going through, and I know everyone's seen these, so I'll go through quickly. But the building's designed with uh, most of the support areas at the first level, uh, and then putting students at the second and third level. Again. Um, really designing this on a team approach with four core classrooms per team, uh, teams structured with a maximum of 100 students. Uh, I don't anticipate at opening that we would be at 100 students, but that's you want to look at max because I know there's individuals that have commented about concerns for growth. Uh, right now, if we took kids in current grade levels, we'd be about 1,050 students at open. Um, and this idea of repeating classroom team areas is not anything new with school construction. There are schools and there are partners that we worked with that are building schools that are three to four times the size. But again, the repeating structure, because one of the pieces that we wanna make sure is that kids feel as connected and close to their teachers and that they have that small neighborhood feel. Uh, and then again, at any given grade level, um, three different teams, and then we have on-team specials, which would be um, your art classes, your STEM classes, and either foreign language or an executive functioning class. Uh, going back to those first floors, uh, your athletics. So this does include two gyms, uh, whereas right now we have three gyms that we're 
uh, between Manchester and Windham Middle and uh, Jordan Small. The big gym can be split into two, so in essence, you get three spaces. So again, all these different specialty education areas, uh, first floor, second floor, and then third floor being straight teams. So we're envisioning um, each grade level will have their own wing, uh, probably fifth and sixth students on the first floor, seventh and eighth grade students on the, on the third floor. Uh, so looking at how we keep students within their individual team areas. Um, just moving on, just giving you some ideas of teams. This is an idea of uh, upper left-hand corner. You have a science room, a math room, ELA, and a social studies uh, spot where students could receive their special education services. And all this centered around a center common area for students. And part of this is to make sure that students are owning those spaces. As both staffs from Jordan Small and Wyndham Middle worked on this, one thing that they identified as common issues with both buildings is that they have very few places to actually meet with groups of students on projects. And so as they contributed to this project, really looked at how do we support our students? How do we support project learning? How do we, how do project-based learning, how do we make sure that our students are remaining as engaged as possible? Just looking quickly through, uh, the building does include, again, a larger gym, which has ability to split down the middle for a couple classes. It has an auxiliary gym, uh, again, with a, a spot for classes. It does include a 600-seat auditorium, and I know I've read some comments about an auditorium in a middle school. Uh, part of that is, again, strong drama program, but also part of it is that our middle school and our both middle schools struggle to get auditorium space uh, due to the nature of high school and high school activities and also being able to do performances and other pieces. Um, it's difficult to get in the Wyndham High School Auditorium. Um, so looking at ways that we can support not only our athletics, but also our, our drama kids and our kids that are involved in music, making sure that they have a performing space. Uh, it does include a, a walking track, running track, and for those community members, uh, Wyndham High School, when the bond was passed, actually had a walking track, running track. If you go look for it at Wyndham High School, it doesn't exist. Uh, it was value engineered out of the project due to excess ledge that was hit through the construction process, and that was one of the items that was cut. And it was a piece that was sorely missed throughout the process. Uh, and the building committee felt very, very strongly as they worked through this process that that should be something uh, included back into it. So again, going back to um, significant state dollars that are being invested here. September 13th, and the September 13th date is important, and I'll go back to that in a minute, but State Board approved $131.7 million of state money uh, for this concept which then the building committee, which was then passed by the RSU 14 board, which then went to straw poll as well, uh, approved a $39.8 million local share. That 39.8 would be split between Wyndham and Raymond based on student population, which for this building would be roughly 80% Wyndham, 20% Raymond. Um, so quick math in your head is about $8 million to Raymond and about $32 million to Wyndham. That is a 20-year bond that uh, would be used to invest and to, to pay for this project. Uh, Wyndham and Raymond currently do not have any school debt. As I mentioned earlier, as of last week, that last payment on Wyndham High School was made. Uh, we do still have a state portion, which will get direct subsidy. It's actually an in and an out on the accounting sheets uh, in which the building will be paid for. Uh, we do have other local referendums that are going on right now. Uh, Scarborough, I had a chance to drive through Scarborough Saturday and um, they're ramping up for their school referendum on Tuesday. That's $160 million um, all locally funded elementary school where they're looking to consolidate their four elementary schools into one. Uh, we know that Cape Elizabeth had $124 million locally funded referendum that went uh, last year. Uh, Town of Cumberland and North Yarmouth had an $84 million locally funded, which actually did not pass. They're bringing it back at a $78 million pre-K-2 building, uh, which will be all locally funded, so not running through the construction process. Uh, right now, it looks like seven 
schools will move forward, but possibly nine in state funding for the latest process. So nine districts will benefit from a school support from the DOE and the remaining schools will all need to be locally funded in order to be able to do a build. Uh, Cumberland, for example, and I, I just think it's important for people to know Cumberland is looking at a $5 increase over five years on the mill rate for a locally funded school. Um, so just an idea, their, their process for funding is a dollar a year over five years to eventually ramp up to pay for uh, their school. So significant dollars here and a significant investment by the state of Maine. And I know nobody can read that right now, uh, but just gives you a balance sheet. Uh, I think the other thing that's important to mention on this is that everyone, uh, when they take a look at a construction project, they think about the cost per square foot. Uh, what we also need to think about and remember is that um, there are soft costs that are involved and soft costs being architectural fees, engineering fees, consultant fees, commissioning fees, all things that then lend themselves to planning and things that have to be done for a project. Uh, one of the interesting things I learned on this project is that architectural fees, the state sets a, a rate at 6% for new construction. If you do a renovation project, it's 8%. So actually the architects make more in a renovation than they do in a straight up construction project uh, when they do this. I know you've all seen this document, this uh, visual. It's been kind of spread out throughout. Um, you know, we've put it out. I know the papers put it out. Uh, but just giving an idea that this has been a partnership of planning over the last two years for this concept. So not only has this concept been approved by the RSU 14 board, uh, it's also been approved by the state construction uh, committee, and it's also been approved by the main state school board. And again, those important um, or those approvals need to be done because again, state of Maine is making a larger investment in this than the communities of Wyndham and Raymond uh, as far as expense goes. I know there's been some questions, and I'm sure we'll maybe we get a few questions tonight about local options um, where the building committee took a look at. Uh, one being those student-centered learning commons, so for each team to have a learning space and for team or grade levels to have learning spaces for projects, that's not covered within the state formula, so those become additional costs. Uh, the auditorium is an additional local cost. Uh, for community and the athletics, the, the walking running track is a local cost, as well as some of the improvements that are being done to support athletics on that campus. Uh, some of the outdoor learning classrooms and uh, the main lobby, we actually made the main lobby a little bit bigger uh, to accommodate safe entry of making sure that the community is entering on one side, that uh, students are entering on the other. Uh, we've learned a lot through our safety planning as far as the best way to bring the public in without intermingling with, with students. Uh, in addition, we've done work with energy modeling to make sure that this is an energy efficient building, but also it's a safety, a safe building with things like school guard glass, which is an anti-breaking um, treatment that's done at the glass on the first floor because the last thing we want is um, somebody to come in and to threaten to harm students or to harm students. So looking at ways that we can harden the building uh, more so. In addition, this is a building that has one entrance and one main exit. Obviously, there's multiple fire exits and other ways for egress, um, but really for one entrance to make sure that school resource officer and others can make sure we're keeping an eye on who's coming and going. Just gonna quickly jump to um, bottom line and cost. Um, this analysis for cost was done midsummer, and actually interest rates have improved a little bit. And even on top of what the main bank, main bond bank can offer, uh, Raymond has, the town of Raymond has outstanding credit, as does the town of Wyndham has outstanding credit. And as an RSU, we're actually able to um, take advantage of both of those. And through that, um, we can actually do much better than what can be offered through the main bond bank. Uh, in addition, we have some opportunities through um, a bond broker that allows us to refinance as interest rates even get a little bit better. So when this was done, approximate tax impact at final cost 
uh, assuming that um, valuations for town stay the same, about 79 cents in Wyndham and 56 cents in Raymond. This is worst case scenario. Uh, without them, if the district were looking to do this on our own for Wyndham, it would be about $3.76 on the mill rate and $2.18 in Raymond. Uh, so to give you an idea if this was just a locally funded project and that this was the recommendation moving forward. Um, what that would translate, and I know you've seen these slides, but um, for tax impact based on that high conservative approach, because one thing is that we've talked about with the building committee, we don't want to go to the public and say that it's going to be a certain amount and that it's going to go larger or we don't want to be putting ourselves in a place with a recent school build that's not too far from us that because of changes in costs that they actually had to go back out to the voters to finish the project. Um, we don't want to get ourselves in that scenario. So we're trying to be as realistic as we can, but giving an idea of what tax impact would be in Wyndham and tax impact worst case scenario would be in Raymond. Uh, this is without state support what possible tax increase would look like if we weren't receiving any sort of state supplement or state funds. What's gonna be a more likely scenario is um, it's gonna take about three years for this to actually even hit um, full amount on the taxes. So most likely the first year in Wyndham is gonna be about 28 cents. In Raymond, it's gonna be about 33 cents. Um, and the other piece that I put in here, which is includes the Raymond Circuit Breaker, and I know the select board's familiar with this as the RSU 14 board is as well. <coughs> Wyndham receives subsidy from the state of Maine. And when the state looks at our two towns, they look at Wyndham and Raymond separately. They look at valuation separately. They look at your number of students separately. And they look at your fiscal capacity separately. Uh, and so for Wyndham, Wyndham, they say you should be spending more than what you can afford, so Wyndham gets subsidy. For Raymond, the state of Maine says, Raymond, you're not quite um, paying right now what you can afford as a community based on a standard mill rate that's applied across. Uh, and so in this project, uh, Raymond would be paying um, 300,000 to unlock that 131 million. That's included in the numbers that are there. So you notice this first year, uh, if this was a two-year step, I think we're going to actually be in a three-year step. So 28 cents in Wyndham, 33 cents in Raymond. Second year, uh, jumping up to probably what's going to be 69 cents total, so an additional 40 cents, and Raymond about 52 cents. If it's a three-year process, then actually we'd be going to that 52 cents over three years and giving an idea of what the overall tax impact would be. Um, so definitely having 77% uh, of the project subsidized by the state of Maine is, is a huge help in this project. Um, something else is important for Raymond voters to know, uh, and I know this was part of the discussion with the select board, is that um, when we became an RSU in 2009, uh, the state looks at us as an RSU and projects that are done through the major capital projects, even if a town doesn't participate, that town is still responsible for the debt payments associated with that. It's different than uh, our cost sharing agreement that was done um, back early inception. I think, Joe, you were actually part of some of the negotiations for that, uh, which talks about that if a town builds a project and it does not go through the state process, then that individual town is responsible for all the costs associated with that project. Uh, so let's say, for instance, uh, Wyndham Middle School was never approved uh, for, and Wyndham voters said, you know what, we're gonna do a $90 million middle school project, and we're not gonna be going through the state project or the state formula. Uh, that would have been $90 million that would have just been assessed to Wyndham and would not have been assessed to Raymond. So there's a little difference. It's how the state views us through statute and how the state views both communities through uh, the funding formula. And it's, it's a little bit of a difference uh, between the two. And it really has to do with number of students and what the state terms as fiscal capacity, which is your overall ability to spend. So last couple slides here. Um, first of all, looking to build an energy efficient building. Um, 
Wyndham Middle School and Jordan Small are certainly not the most efficient buildings. They were built in the old days of unit ventilators. They do not have great air turnover. Um, and basically they were designed in an age with just heat that sometimes was always on, even in the summer. Um, but really looking at uh, greatest amount of energy efficiency and the term that they use is the as an EUI, which is basically how much energy is used per square foot. Uh, buildings in our district through Bill Hansen, who's done a tremendous amount of work, is about 60 to 70 for EUI. National average for schools is 100. This building is 34.9. It does have a solar option, which the building committee has voted that they want to look at a power purchase agreement, which would mean that we would allow somebody to have solar on the roof and we would get reduced electricity costs. If that's the case, the EUI drops down to about 17. Um, RSU 14 is already in a power purchase agreement. We own 2% of about eight solar fields across the state of Maine that um, we did not pay for. We get a reduced electricity rate and the companies that built them actually get a reduced tax credit or get the tax credit. And they also um, get reduced energy rates as well. So kind of a win-win. Last two slides here, which is just, um, this is a healthy building, has great natural lighting, has great acoustics. Uh, healthy buildings do have an impact on students. We learned this during COVID, number of air changeovers, uh, amount of energy recovery that we can do. Um, and so making sure that, you know, we're trying to keep this as healthy and, and safe as we can for kids. Again, the ballot, this is the Raymond ballot. Uh, so I know some people in the room have probably already voted. <clears throat> and the last thing that's listed there that I didn't mention before, we're required on the ballot to show what the, the savings would be in the first two years. Uh, the posters that you'll see, or I think there was actually a graphic that appeared in the paper mentioned 300,000, the ballot says 200,000. It will be 300,000 once the building's built. The actual uh, state statute says you have to do it in the first two years. Well, the first two years are actually construction, so you don't have a new building. So the first two years, this is money that will be deferred from capital projects that would have gone into either Wyndham Middle or to Jordan Small for upgrades. And so just wanted to explain why the difference in case anyone says, well, it says 200,000 on my ballot and it's 300,000 uh, on what you're putting out for posters. So I, I know it's been a long process and I know that probably the questions tonight aren't about the building and probably about process that was used as, as moving forward. Um, I counted the other day, I think at least six board votes uh, as well as two state board votes, a Raymond Select Board vote, a couple straw polls uh, working through this process. Uh, if the referendum passes, this is still over a three and a half year build uh, 30 to 36 months of construction will need to take place in order to build a building of this size. Uh, so still will take quite a while before um, things get finished up. There have not been any blueprints drawn of this building. Actually, the state process, this is a concept. So should the referendum pass, it will go to um, design and those pieces will work through. Also just reading some of the community forum threads because I'll go back to that September 13th date, why it's important, especially for, um, we'll go back here. State statute has, uh, once a concept has gone through all these different steps that you have six months to pass a referendum. If a referendum doesn't pass, that the money then passes on to the next school on the list. Um, the reason why this is important is that six months starts on that September 13th date. So by the time we get to referendum, uh, we'll be almost two months in. Uh, for us to submit a ballot question, it, we have to submit our question 60 days prior to the election. Uh, so if this were to go to a second referendum with any changes, it's actually a 60 day process. So in, in essence, you have about a month, month and a half in order to make any changes. Uh, and actually would require some changes from the, the state school board and as well as the local board. So I know there's some changes and I know there's been some questions about timelines that have been out there and what all this means. Uh, again, all this is laid out within chapter 61. If you want some riveting reading, uh, going through school construction process, major capital projects, 
uh, and how this is structured. And again, uh, it is so structured because uh, the state of Maine, which is all of us, um, is actually going ahead and, and paying this. I can tell you school project number nine, which I think is an elementary school in Augusta, is right on the cusp of whether or not they'll receive state funding for a project. Um, and so we know we have districts that are down line. The next rating cycle goes out in 24-25. And if you think about this process, uh, it started in 16. If this does move forward, and we won't know until next week, it will be 11 years from when the application was done to when a building possibly opens. So that means for schools and starting in 24 for their applications, they'd be looking at possibly a school in 35 um, as far as getting a build done. Uh, so it, it is a long process, it's a long, arduous process. Uh, but happy to report when high school is paid for, when it was built in 2004, it was the most expensive school in the state of Maine at $72 a square foot uh, was the construction cost. Uh, this will be the most expensive school in the state of Maine when it's done at $431 in construction costs, which has been done by two independent estimators uh, looking at it. And there will be projects in the future. I know of a consolidated high school that is being looked at and in the plans, uh, which if built will be $300 million. Um, so not in Wyndham or Raymond, but uh, there, are, there will be more expensive school builds that will go on. Um, and so with that, I know there's some people who have some questions or want to ask some questions of you folks, but uh, that's where we are in this process. And so next Tuesday night, late, we'll know whether or not this is moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Howell. So we'll move into a question and answer period. So as Trish said, noted, if you want to make a comment or ask a question, we just ask that you come up to the podium, state your name, where you live and uh, ask your question, we've got the select board. And at least two of the school board members here tonight, uh, Mr. McClellan, uh, who did vote on this, um, as far as saying yes to the merger, uh, regrets that he wasn't able to attend. He's out of state. Um, Char was at, on the board at the time and did vote for the merge. I unfortunately was not. Um, I've been on the board since June of 2021. Uh, just to give you a sense of the timing there. So um, who would like to uh, make a comment or a question? Break the ice for everybody, why not? Hi everybody, I know most of you. Uh, Donna Vieira, I live in Raymond. I have uh, two kids that this will affect. Um, I know most, if not all of you, have heard my concerns, but happy to echo some of them and thank you for what you're doing. I know this is thankless and difficult, but it's difficult for me as a Raymond parent. It's also difficult for a number of people who feel like they can't show up here tonight. And I can speak for some of them who, you know, have given me their words and their concerns, but there's a lot of people that feel like they can't be heard and retaliation and a number of other issues. So I think that's important to keep in mind. Um, I think the biggest thing that I want to start with is the fact that we were not asked if we wanted to be a part of this. There was an assumption made that because we agreed to stay in the district, that we would gladly go along with this project. But at that time, there was no site selected. There was a whole grid that was put out. I have a question on when that was created because if you do the math, it's pretty skewed to end up at Wyndham. Chris, to your point, there's very few 35 plus acre sites that exist in Raymond or anywhere in between. And it hasn't been clear on why that needs to be 35 acres. Why do we need a site that that's, that's large, right? So if we go along with that and we come together and we say, okay, we want to be together, come in the middle. <coughs> but ultimately, when you look at all the points, it really skews towards needing to be closer to the Wyndham schools for transportation. But there's no transportation plan for Raymond. Our kids are going to be on the bus for, you and I talked about it, right? Mm -hmm. 5.55 is when kids in Raymond start getting on the school mm -hmm. bus in the morning. So how early are our fifth graders, sixth graders, seventh graders getting on the bus in the morning? Yeah, okay, 10 years old, right? 
So we're talking about the benefits of the school and it sounds amazing. All the physical health, this is great. What are we talking about physical and mental health of a 10 year old, 11, 12 year old sitting on the bus for, no one can actually tell us. We're gonna say an hour to an hour and a half each way, right? Right now, for those of us that live seven, eight minutes from RES and Jordan Small, our kids are on the bus for roughly 25, 35 minutes. Depends on the day and the kids, right? So we're 30, the, like for those of us who live up in North Raymond, we are 30, 35 minutes from this new middle school. Without the bus stops. Without bus stops, yep. Without traffic, which we all know is a nightmare. But when looking at the at the site selection grid, you only consider 302 traffic going one way. In the past, Wyndham, including, and please correct me if I'm wrong, former or maybe current Wyndham board members have said, we don't want our kids going to Raymond, right? They were offered the chance to have kids go to Jordan Small. They said, no. Why do our kids have to go down all the way down to South Wyndham? So the decision gets made for us but Wyndham was allowed to say, nope, we don't want it. There was room at Jordan Small for them, but they said no. So we are just, oh yeah, they'll just go along with it. We don't want to go along with it. We were not given a voice. We were not given a choice. And oh, we had a non-binding straw poll. But it sounds like that wasn't really a non-binding poll because that was part of the state's requirement to move forward. Everyone I talked to either found out about that the night before or the morning of, but it was non-binding and it was at Wyndham High School. If that was a vote, that should have been a vote. We were not told that was a vote. We even had a vote. Nobody has asked us. So this is the forum we get. There is no transportation plan. There is seemingly no thought to what we all think about this. And yeah, there's some families in Raymond that are for this, and that is wonderful that that works for them. But for those of us who it doesn't work for, those of us that have kids that cannot physically sit on a bus for that long, those of us who don't feel safe putting our kids on a bus that long, five-year-old getting stabbed this week was not great to see, wouldn't want to be that parent or that child or anyone who had to witness that. Where's our voice? The select board, the school board, we ask you to represent us. And use people as, oh, they haven't spoken up. We have, we've tried. But we get silenced or our words seem to go nowhere. But ultimately what matters is a vote, but we weren't given a chance. Oh, well, you'll get to vote at the referendum. We don't get a bigger say. We have less people. If more people in Wyndham want to go for this, we're SOL. So again, we don't have a vote. Who's speaking for us and our kids? Because the expectation is that it is the school board and the select board and the school board members of Raymond. And I get it, you guys have not the majority vote. But I mean, what are we doing? Like we're supposed to be working together for the common good of our kids. But our kids are now going to be stuck going to a very nice, you guys did a great job with the design and the planning and it looks fantastic. But none of that matters if we have to have our kids that far away where we don't have the ability to go to them. Raymond community members aren't going to be able to use the middle school. You think we're driving 30 to 35 minutes to go use a walking track? I would also like to know from a security standpoint, we're letting strangers into our middle school, but that's that's another topic. But this is not a community resource. This is a Wyndham school that we are forced to send our kids to. That is what this is. We are guests in that school, just like many will tell you and many of you know, guests in the high school, right? But at least we have school choice. We won't have that option. So, is this a combination Wyndham Raymond Middle School? Not right now. It feels like it is a Wyndham school and Raymond kids, oh, better get into it. And I gotta tell you, I had a very confused elementary school student coming home and seeing all the posters and everything up at RES. Like they're kids. 
We need to be thinking about the kids, not the parents walking in the door. And yes, it got moved. You and I had the, talked about that, that got moved. Yeah, it was, but they saw it. I mean, they all know. And they're very confused. So I, I just, I don't understand who's speaking for our kids and why we were not given a vote. We This was done in 2021. We've had multiple, multiple options to have a vote, but we were never given that choice. So <clears throat> thanks for your comments. I wrote down seven questions. Um, <laughs> I, I tried to keep it short. We'll start, this no, I mean, let's work through them. Um, I'll try to start with the matrix design. I've sat on that committee uh, since November um 2021 the matrix at that time had been designed i can say that it was redesigned meaning that there were different weights given to um, the impact of busing and the state's requirement to understand in that matrix the weight that the transportation impacts would have on the selection of the site <clears throat> i can also say that the uh, density and population was the biggest factor working against raymond yeah. The reality of our district is that if we were in a juxtaposition and that the school was going to come up, you know, there was a new build coming on in Raymond, we would be in the opposite hourglass situation. It's a big district. And that matrix was to look at the region as a whole. So the geography of the tip of Raymond to the south tip of Wyndham and, you know, in that, in that compass rose, it's a big, big space. And the matrix itself was heavily weighted to the busing and transportation um, through that corridor and also scored very lowly because of the impact that it would have to take that many buses through that narrow corridor with the roads that we have today. Take your point about being, a, you know, buses don't always go through the 302 corridor, but if you're looking at uh, direct routes, or if you're looking at express buses or eliminating that transfer at Mill Street, those would be some of the areas where those buses would end up coming through uh, to streamline. The population density piece, um, if you look at the graphics really, and this was hard for me to understand at the time, and I know there's a few in the room that were on that committee as well, the, the density in north of Raymond and even south of Wyndham to some extent, it, it gradually gets more and more and more. And so that matrix, again, guided by the state process, was giving higher, higher points to those sites that were in the higher density populations because it impacts your busing efficiency. And um, having read some very bizarre articles yesterday about busing efficiency for too long, um, it made sense to me why that was the case. You're looking at resources, busing and time, against getting students into a region that has the highest population density and that's going to score higher on that matrix as a result um, so that um, the, the comment about it being weighted against raymond um, is factually true in the sense that if we look at the whole district there are it's not just raymond though there were other areas we looked at gray road as well there were a number of other locations that did score okay to that final nine that they just couldn't break through. Um, I just want to mention also quickly, if we don't, if I don't come back to it, that Patricia Avenue um, as a site that was donated by the town um, that we did do that first level ESA on, and we did make an investment in that site to make sure it was a landfill and the um, build committee did make the decision to ensure for due diligence that we spend some money looking at the environmental impact of that site. And it didn't take very long to understand that the vernal pools and the environmental assessment that came back was very unfavorable for that site. And when we put that into the matrix, and again, there weren't any other sites that Mr. Howell had noted that were appropriate or zoned at the time that we were looking, right? And this is more about time than anything else. So that's just, that was question number one. Um, so the 35 acres, Mr. Howell, can I have you just comment on what the requirement is just for a school and why 35 acres is required just in concept? For, yeah, it's actually a great question. It's actually related to the build of athletic fields and other supporting structures and things that, that um, support a school. So obviously we have kids not only going to school, but we also have kids that are involved with activities that take place. So part of that is to support. Um, and so 
Jordan Small, which I think actually sits on five acres, and um, across the street, Raymond Elementary, which actually sits on 25, but many, much of that 25 is actually uh, heads downhill quite a ways and has that play field out back that I know Alyssa was involved with, with the Army Corps, helping to bring in hundreds and hundreds of yards of fill uh, in order to be able to make that happen. I think in the Patricia Ave site, because I had a chance to walk that probably three or four times, um, some concerns with actually getting to it because the neighborhood at which you get to Patricia would not have actually supported traffic, so it would have required purchasing additional acreage nearby in order to be able to do that. And there was even some question because of the grade that comes in there, whether or not you would have ADA co um, compatibility with the sidewalks because coming up to the last piece, uh, that site has a couple vernal pools, uh, which you have to draw, draw, what is it, a 250 foot radius from the vernal pool, which eliminates construction. It has a 60 foot high capped landfill uh, in addition, it was um, zoned or permitted for 300,000 gallons of septic sludge uh, for 20 plus years there to be a dispersal site. Um, it struggled with uh, public water, so it would have required a well to be there, uh, as well as some of the infrastructure pieces with three-phase power and all those other pieces. I, I totally understand why that site yep. was not rolled out. What I'm trying to understand is why do we need <coughs> and if Raymond wasn't part of this site, right, there was a whole plan of, oh, it was just Wyndham, like to your point, we're on five and 25 acres, mm -hmm. but there was never a look at, hey, what would it take to do two separate schools? We looked at Wyndham Middle School, I get that, I've read the reports, looked at doing a massive addition, which included Raymond, so I don't know that that was a totally fair assessment of what that would actually look like if it was just Wyndham and we did, you know, two separate renovations, but why 35 acres? If there's a site that's a little bit smaller, does it need to be? Our, our other schools in the area are not building on 35 acres. I'll, then I'll just speak to, and this is conversations with Mike McClellan, so it's not me firsthand, because I was not superintendent when, obviously when RES was built. Um, but when that building was built, there was only one site that the building committee could actually find to put a school in town, which was Raymond Elementary site. Uh, they scoured back and forth. In fact, they even looked at Patricia Ave as a possible location. Um, and there just, there aren't any spaces in between. And actually, if you work your <laughs> way up through 85, because this was actually an actual we did one night and the building committee uh, heading up 85, there's a lot of small lots with the exception of there's a lot, um, oh, it's probably a quarter mile past Good Life coming up 85 where the power lines cross and heads up to a grade and then goes back and we took a look at that site as well. Um, so it became difficult. I mean, in looking at that corridor between the two, uh, there were extra sites in South Wyndham where there were some big field areas, but again, you're getting farther and farther away. Um, so just looking at what falls within that corridor. Yeah, I think we're going in circles. Like yeah. we, we're not really answering the question of yeah, what- I think the, the, the the question is the, the question that's being asked is not getting it is the 35 acres comes from the formula that is needed x x amount of foot per student and so that's where the 35 acres is coming from okay. sorry if i misinterpreted no i just i think it's important for everyone to understand that like you're this is being designed as a multi-use property right it's a middle school it's a Wyndham community resource right that we're, none of us are saying, hey, this had to be here, right? If this was going to happen, <clears throat> it didn't have to be here. But maybe 35 acres is ideal, but what if we scaled it back? What if we didn't have everything as the community resource when we're saying that both communities are now going to have a community center, right? Which is also yet to be funded, and that's going to be more of a burden on the taxpayers, presumably, but we don't know. But, you know, I, I don't want to give, I want to make sure I know others want to speak, but there is no transportation plan. There is no plan for the physical and mental health of our kids. That is not being taken into account. And what, every time I've asked the question, it's been, well, we hope to figure that out, right? We're gonna work something out. We have to wait until the year before. We can't do this, we can't do that. Hope is not a strategy. Can I, can I just speak to that? So because since we talked on the phone last week, 
Um, we have been investigating as far as modules. So let me just first of all say is that site selection, the committee went through an exhaustive process and looking at, I think it was over 109 sites. Um, in following, if they were to go through the exact same process again, I don't know that they would have landed at another site because of the amount of time that was done and the due diligence was spent in looking through to get to that component. Uh, we have started looking at um, a module because as we talked about on the phone, um, our transportation routing software, which basically takes, here's where the schools are, here's where the kids are, here's who needs to be where, and then works through trying to put through other places. Uh, we've looked at purchasing an additional module that would allow us to be able to do that outside of, of where we're at right now for current year, based on a school being located in this particular location. Um, we know right now, as you mentioned, that the longest ride is an hour and five minutes. And that is the longest ride, which also includes a stop at Mill Street with students that have to go between two different buses, so they're getting two picked up. We know we can do some improvements with, within that. Um, did a regional survey of other school districts, um, single town school districts, as well as RSUs and others. Um, there are districts that Brunswick, Scarborough, Westbrook, that have our rides within just a single town. Um, the worst one I saw, which we would not head in that direction, which was um, 72, which is out towards Freiburg, was 135 minutes that a kid was on the bus. Um, we don't want to do that. If anything, we want to yeah, reduce but we, the amount we, of time. We don't have that now, Chris, right? And, so, we would, and I'm just saying we will. We but will we're not through. asking for like okay. you're going to pick each child up at 557 and 558. There is no plan. The module, that's all great. There's been years to develop a plan around this. It hasn't happened. So my assumption as a voter is the we'll figure it out later is meh, right? It doesn't matter. Getting the yes vote is all that matters. So putting the hard plans aside and the things that people don't want to hear about, that's easy. And that, it's tough to say, tough to hear, but that's where it's like, we're just going in circles. At the end of the day, nobody asked Raymond voters, yes or no, if we wanted to be involved in this. When that site was, hey, this is the only option, pause, hey, Raymond, in 70 days, you're gonna have a referendum. Show up and actually place a legal vote if you wanna be heard. So let me just speak to that. So thank you, Mr. Howell, for helping out with that. So transportation, there's a few factors. I think everyone in this room can understand that there's uh, hopes and dreams of a bypass of some kind in the future. We're not gonna take that into account today. We can't possibly. For myself personally, I have three kids that will also be in that situation whereby I think a three minute bus ride's a little tough for, for some days, depending on them getting to the kitchen, to the bathroom. So I, I take your point. Um, and your experience today is here and going to the state average, is is the problem, right? The challenge becomes when we look at the overall experience of the kid versus the decisions that get made very coldly in a state formula to be straight, aren't as intimate, they're not as granular as that. But what we need to focus on is that the district that we live on serves the students. It does serve the students. We have to trust in that. That's the decision that we make. So from my perspective, when I look at this and I look at the site and I look at the impact on busing, I wouldn't expect to have a model for transportation for three years from now because the students where they live, who's going to be in what school, how much pre-K are we going to have? There's, there's so many factors that go into the modeling for that. Even the idea that we would have a mock model to allow us to understand that it's probably going to be within 30 to 60 minutes is is reasonable but i don't know exactly I, i'm trying to understand what what would be a reasonable thing for you to hear I mean, I think based on those factors is, you know we're going to commit to kids being on the bus for no more than x amount of time we are going to have a way for Raymond kids to participate in after school activities because I know for many of us, sure. getting down there to pick up our kids, if we're working and every other thing, it's one thing when it's 10, 5, 15 minutes from your house, it's another when it's 30, 45, right? Depending on the day and traffic. 
So our kids, this is supposed to be an equal opportunity and equal this and equal that. It's not. None of it is equal. But a plan is a commitment of what will and will not be. We're not expecting down to the minute. Yes, kids are, people are going to move. Things are going to change. But some level of a commitment from the boards to say, hey, you're, we are telling you, these are the things that we're committing to. How long are the kids going to be on the bus? What's going to be done to make them safe? We desperately need bus monitors in, in this district. And which is a separate conversation. It's a separate conversation, but it could be part of the plan yep. though, right? Like, is this going to cost us more? Do we need more buses? The buses have to be back sure. for RES, right? There's a lot of open questions and everyone we're like, for those of us that are worried about this, we're filling in the blanks. And I don't think any of you want us filling in the blanks, but that's what we're doing. So, I mean, that's just kind of where we're at. I know there's others that want to speak, so I want to give them the floor, but I appreciate the time and I hope that we can come to something. So I've got a few questions that if you're sure. okay, if you want yep. to sit down, I mean, don't feel like you have to, to stand. Yep. Um, there's a question of why there was no vote. Can I ask the select board just to comment on that? Because um, just a quick catch up in September of 2021, the three school board members at the time with Superintendent Howell approached the select board of Raymond to discuss the state's requirement for the school board to vote on whether the two towns would merge the middle school build. The school board members approached the select board. It was a meeting that was publicized. You can go back and watch it. And essentially there was a dialogue about what that looks like. Well, what's required? What's the state's timeline? And how do we garner feedback from the residents of Raymond? And so with that as a a backdrop in September, 14th of 2021, your team then decided at that meeting to um, gather information via public forum. So I'll maybe have one of you jump in from there. Okay, you want to do it? Want me to do it? Yeah. So um, one of the things we did is we, um, we took public input is what we did. Um, I'm the one that did the withdraw to try to withdraw from the RSU, not once, twice. And we said we said in the first withdrawal that a new school was coming. And we did have school officials, not, not school officials, board previous board members from Raymond stand up here at these meetings and tell us, it's not true, you're making that up and it's not gonna happen. And we just put, a, either way, we got a consolidation agreement. I mean, we got an agreement with the RSU for the cost sharing and also for the um, the bit of the new footprints for each town would cover it. So that benefited Raymond a lot more. Um, but that one did fail, but I think we came out of it. The second one we put in, because I felt like the new garage down there was the transportation garage. That wasn't ours, but that did fit under a new, a different category. So, um, we, on the second one, it was 2048, I think to 1018. <laughs> second vote and it got voted down. So the people of Raymond said they wanted to stay with the RSU. That's how we read it is what it is. And so what happens is I would be really absolutely pretty stupid to get knocked in the head third time, not to hear what the people had to say of Raymond, uh, saying, saying with the RSU. And we had people stand up at the meetings, but I do want to say we had, we had forums. We had October 4th, and I watched them last night. October 4th, we had 12 people there. We had October 5th, we had 13 people there. There are 4,000 people in the town of Raymond, okay? And and we gave people chances, and I think maybe we got a handful of emails, that's it. And we got it in our faces, but we also met at fire stations. We um, we, We met all over the place to have these meetings as far as trying to get a budget together and say, this is what it is. And we even had a person stand outside all day long voting, say, turn down the RSU. So at our next meeting, when Chris had come and said, this is the timeline and it is a crunch timeline, what does Raymond wanna do? Because either way, either way, whether we voted to join that school, middle school or not, because it's a state funded, we had to pay part of that. So no matter what, whether we went into that school or not, we had to pay part of it. So the select board 
had meetings, like I said, and we got more input from people and it was kind of a little bit of mixed feelings back and forth is what it is, but nobody ever, and, and, and I know the comments coming up on the thread, uh, on the community thread is Chris said, we would still continue to do work on Jordan Small School. That was two years ago. And you can't hold somebody to something like that when things change. Because right now in the town of Raymond, if you guys want to keep Jordan Small School, we will be paying for part of the new school. We will be paying for the transportation garage. We will be paying for Jordan Small School also is what it is. And my take on this is who is going to tell their kid that they want to stay back in, Ray in Jordan Small Elementary School? And don't get me wrong. I think it's a great school. My kids went through it. But when you've got this whole big thing over here that we are paying for, state of the art, all these new things, everything, and these kids are the Cinderella's that didn't get to go to the ball. That's the way that I'm looking at it. Because what happens is we're paying for this. And as a, as a selectman, as my taxes, I have to look at the elderly. I have to look at the middle age. I have to look at everybody in this town and their taxes. So meanwhile, when we're paying for all of that, it's going to go sky high. So we as a board, after taking into those several meetings, had a, had a board meeting and we took and everybody, like I said, 12 people one night, 13 people the night. No outrage, no nothing. And we went off of what the vote. That's when we voted that night to go ahead and join the middle school. There. Can I just speak to that also because <clears throat> the select board actually doesn't have the authority to do the consolidation. That was a um, advisory vote yeah. that was done because ultimately in state statute, and for those of you who are interested, it's uh, 20A. 4102, closing of a school building. Um, and it's actually the RSU 14 board that has the legal authority to go through that process. So after that, when the select board made the decision at that time as a recommendation, then the RSU 14 board took it up and, and went through a process of, of some of those other pieces. So I don't want this falling all on the select board for that because it was also the RSU 14 board's responsibility to then also hold some forums and collect. Uh, and then I know we actually came across them recently. There was a list of, of frequently asked questions that were put out uh, as well as some opportunities for. So it was really kind of a two part process. And this was all back in November of 21 yep. uh, that this was done. And then the, the board ultimately voted and I think it was November 17th or 18th yep. of 21 uh, to go ahead and, and consolidate the two, which <laughs> is the authority that is granted them under state statute that if they're replacing a building that the board has that opportunity uh, in order to be able to, to do that with the school. But Chris, one of the other things too is it was so nerve wracking, I know on my part, to sit there and watch the school board vote whether they were going to accept Raymond or not. I mean, we're in RSU, and, but they had to. They had to make, make that decision. And it was. It was nerve wracking because they could have voted no. And we still would have been on the hook for mm. the school. Joe, did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I want to sound like a boomer. I mean, yeah. You know, I'm looking around the room and I see Sue Carling in the back and our kids went to win the middle school back in the day, back in the late 90s, mid 90s to early 2000s. Joe, it was back in the late 80s because right. I was the first eighth grade class to go to win the middle school. Yeah. Yeah. So, and our kids were on the bus for an hour. They played sports. They did win them chamber singers. They did all that stuff they do as kids. And they all got the late bus back to Raymond and we would pick them up from the late bus. You know, this, this is nothing new. It, it, it is what it is when Raymond is a small town and is isolated as part of an RSU. Wyndham is 20,000 people. Raymond is almost 5,000 people. There's a huge discrepancy in population. And the fact is, in order to get some of the programming that you would get in a bigger RSU in a district, you couldn't offer some of that stuff at Jordan Small School without 
the taxes being double what they are right now. If we had to renovate Jordan Small right now, that's a $15 million project more than likely uh, to fix it, to bring it up to where it really needs to be. Um, so I understand you have little kids. I had little kids at one time. They're now 40 and 38. They're not little anymore. I got grandchildren that are you know, going through some of this stuff. But it's possible to do. It's scary as a parent because you're not thinking that it's possible. But it, it works out. It does work out. And I know I sound like a boomer and I hate that. But we live through it. <laughs> You know, we lived through it. And Raymond was a much smaller town back then. We've doubled in population. And, and many of you probably don't remember that a lot of kids went to NYA. That was Raymond's school. Yeah, Louise back there went to NYA as her school. Not Wyndham, but NYA. So think about how far that is. All right. What has changed in what we're doing now? Just because we did something. We have to go to the podium. Go to the podium. Now. We can't hear. I'm just telling you from experience, this stuff has worked itself out and it is possible to do. So I have a couple of questions still that Donna had asked, and I want to make sure that we try to capture as much of, of her questions as possible. But um, yeah, go ahead. Sure. <clears throat> I wrote mine down just because, like, sure. I have this train of thought. So, um, good evening. Thank you for having a meeting tonight in Raymond. Appreciate that. Um, I've been a resident of Raymond for about five years. I moved here from Northern Virginia. What's your name? My name is Megan Conchuino. Okay. Thanks. I'm a resident of Raymond. I have three kids in the school district, one in third grade, one in first grade, and then I have a three-year-old that will also go through the school district. Um... When deciding to move to Maine, I looked in many towns all over. I wanted to find the best school district for my children, just like every parent in here. I've gotten that feeling as Wyndham parents too have chosen that school district for many reasons to fit what they personally think is the best thing for their children. Um, I did come here for the excellent schools and the small town environment. I love being able to watch my children participate in the extra activities Raymond provides, but sadly now, um, I'm unsure I will be able to do that with my children being bused all the way to Wyndham. I also will miss the small classroom sizes and walking into a school where every staff member knows my child. I went to school in New York City and later moved to a small town in upstate New York. I can personally tell you that I have been in both a very large school district and then in a much smaller one. In the much smaller school district, I did receive much more help and attention from my teachers, and I was able to participate in many more activities. I love Raymond and the schools, and I just feel like every reason I moved here is being taken away from me and my family. One of the biggest decisions parents make in their life is where to raise their children. And when I did that, I chose Raymond, not Wyndham. As I am sure Wyndham residents chose Wyndham for their own reasons. My biggest concern here is, like every other parent here, my kids play soccer, they play basketball, they have friends here. When I moved here, I knew that this was an RSU. This is new to me because the town that I went to high school with in upstate New York is smaller than Raymond, and we have our own elementary school, our own middle school, and our own high school. The high school that I went to was built in 1925, and it still serves as a high school today. Renovations are done all the time. What I don't understand is why things have gotten so bad at the Wyndham Middle School and things weren't fixed going on and why Honestly, so much is needed in repairs. Usually in a budget every year, things are looked at and fixed. I also don't understand why we can't just keep Jordan Small Middle School and maybe scale back on this Wyndham project. I understand the need that Wyndham needs a new middle school. I do. But I don't understand why it has to be closing Jordan Small Middle School. I would gladly pay a tax increase every year because I'm gonna spend it in gas, going back and forth, taking my kids to all the activities that they wanna do. 
wanting to be there as a parent to participate in those things with my children, as I'm sure every other parent here that I see at soccer, basketball, people want to be there for their kids. And um, sadly, this location is going to limit that. I know you said it worked for you, but look at the population and how it's grown as it's continued to growing in Wyndham. I see apartment complexes going up in every corner. Raymond has a new townhouse, I believe, division going on down here. These things don't just, they're not gonna work themselves out. People work late. My husband works in Portland, so I am the primary parent that brings three children everywhere. And I work on top of that. I am not gonna be able to enjoy any of the things that this Wyndham Middle School is going to offer. I think it's beautiful. The design is wonderful. I see a lot of thought went into it and I can clearly see how it would benefit the families and the children of Wyndham, but not the children of Raymond. And that's really all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so I just, I got uh, renovating Wyndham Middle School over the years and maybe we could tie that into um, a piece of- Can Donald's. I just speak to that? Yeah. It was yeah. built poorly from the beginning. Okay. There's two sister buildings to it. Uh, one sister building, which is the in Old Orchard, the other one burned in Bath this past year and Bath is looking to replace it. Um, but definitely here, um, the small town piece because of definitely have being um, superintendent in the RSU, which it does include Wyndham and Raymond, uh, and then also having the opportunity over the years to be the high school principal, which was the one consolidated school, uh, and having the opportunity to work with, with families from actually both communities. Uh, they do have different feels to them, and I just want to acknowledge that most definitely. I think Wyndham's a wonderful community. Hmm. I moved here for these schools. I accepted yes. yeah, I did too. I just moved here. You guys had the middle school. Excuse me, May. I have a question from someone online. This is Sue. Okay. Can, we just Can you hear me, Chris? Yes. Yeah, hold on a second. Does anyone else okay. want to respond to? No, but I, ha I do have a question that before we go into another question. Say, say the vote. To keep Jordan Small and Chris, I think you, I'm I'm not sure who would have the answer to this. To be honest, say Jordan Small um, stays open, okay? Say you have 200 kids in in the school system. 100 of them want to go to the new middle school, and then you have 100 that are still staying at Jordan Small School. When and it's not even this board. It could be the next board, anybody else coming in, because this the board has to fiscally put out put out a fiscally responsible budget. So when does the school board and the superintendent come together to say that building is costing us way too much to keep it open for a hundred students? Um, so does the town of Raymond pick up the costs for that building by itself without any cost sharing? And and also the renovations of that building if it's going to be state if it's staying open. But these are tough questions. No, Sorry. it's a couple of different questions that are there. And so first of all, um, that decision was made in twenty one by a board vote. Um, I don't have any authority to change that decision. Right. And as again, there's been six or seven subsequent RSU fourteen board votes. Um, the, all of those votes would have to be revoted on by the RSU 14 board to even consider what you're talking about. So what I'm saying, asking you is technically moot because we can't go back there then. Hypothetically, if you were to go back there again, mm -hmm. um, it would be a couple things would need to happen is that you would need to have a renegotiation of the cost sharing agreement uh, because of the expense that would then be put over into Raymond mm -hmm. uh, for that order that to happen. It would require board action. Uh, it would also require to go back to the main state school board and population projections and every other component that would have to happen. So looking at the cost sharing formula, um, renovations for a building would have to be approved by the RSU 14 board. Any sort of new construction for beyond the footprint would have to be paid for locally by Raymond voters. Um, I think at this point though, and again, um, 
I can't speak for the board because the board are the decision makers. It would require board action in order for that to even happen or for something to remain um, and would have to go back to the 2021 vote. <clears throat> nope. I just wanted to put that out there because that was something that did come up. <clears throat> and I know Sue had a question from yep. somebody online. and So can you hear it's, us? It's more of a statement. It says it's from a, um, a gentleman named Stephen Knapp. And it says, I have not heard in any presentation of the commuting issues to and from Raymond as Wyndham has major plans to slow down traffic with the upcoming growth plan. Sewer will allow an enormous amount of new residents, all of which will, will most definitely allow down traffic. Um, no, uh, another question. Um, it's my understanding that uh, school is considered two and a half hours to get a full day in technically. If you go two and a half hours, that is a con it's considered a day. It's not a day that's m missed day that you guys have to make up later. Okay. okay, so what about changing the hours so they're not getting up at 5.55 a.m. and maybe cutting the day shorter? I'm just trying to think of some alternatives to possibly help. No, and I... I would never suggest, I would not suggest reducing the school day okay. um, in order to be able to change that. I'd, other than not for the length of school day, hours of the school day, absolutely, uh, to look at that because we are one of the earliest starters of, of any districts around us. Uh, so doing that but not shortening the amount of time that students are actually having instruction and being at school, uh, I wouldn't suggest that. So Nope, there's another thing that came up. You're on. <laughs> uh, my name is Tom Gobieski. I've lived in Raymond for 15 years. Um, and I just have a question. I'm probably the only one here who doesn't know the answer to this, but I'll ask it anyway. Um, because my, we live in the North Raymond end, and we, for this very transportation reason, our kids go to Gray High School. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that's not an option for middle school students, that they're required to go, they would be required to go to Wyndham Middle School, and that the choice option is not available. Can someone just speak to that and explain? Sure, I can, I can speak to it. Um, in state statute, which is what we all have to follow, uh, school choice is granted to those school districts that don't operate a school at a particular level. And for Raymond, school choice was done on the ballot about the same time that consolidation was voted on. 2009? And we did the, it before. Yep, that Raymond did the maintain school choice and then at that point um, kept it going into perpetuity. In state statute, if a school district has a school at a particular level, um, then it's a requirement for students to be able to, to, that students need to go there. This came up recently in the Chevres case, which went to the Supreme Court, where people were asking about if I, my, my district has a high school, can I send my kids to Chevres? And it's no, because you already have a school that's, that's offered there. Families do have the opportunity of requesting superintendent's agreements, which is an opportunity to say, I'd like to go to another school district. And in those cases, um, the superintendent and I have a conversation. Does it make sense for the student to go to this particular place and do they have room? And families can request superintendent's agreements. And we have kids that come into Wyndham and Raymond. We have kids that go out of Wyndham and Raymond. We have kids from Raymond that go to Wyndham. We have kids that go from uh, Wyndham to Raymond based on what's best for the kid in that particular situation. But as far as school choice, where you can just choose to go wherever with high school, that was done prior to consolidation. School Pardon choice, my language, yeah. Yep, that's okay. Superintendent's agreements, yes, are available. Yeah, so that I guess that's where I was hitting on then. What, at the moment Jordan Small closes then, is that opportunity or would that opportunity mm -hmm. be made available to yeah. those in the middle school grades? If a family wanted to send their student to another district, then yeah, they can ask for a superintendent's agreement. Are you going to commit to approving all those, Chris? Like, I get that it's the other superintendents, but if, if you know. You need to go to the podium, please. They, th this is being video cast, okay. video Sorry. at home. Well, maybe you can answer, ask the question if you don't um, mind. No, because we technically do have a, a middle school because we are in RSU. Right. So that middle school is the choice, is what it is. And I, like, again, you go ahead. <laughs> families can request superintendents agreements 
And it has been my practice for when it makes sense to actually grant those agreements. No, I think I think what they're saying is since that high that middle school is now in Wyndham, not in Raymond. So just like the high school is in Wyndham. So we're Raymond, still in RSU. We still weren't in RSU, RSU before. But in Raymond, you can choose Doesn't, to go to a different high school, right? We don't have a high school. Right, we don't have a high school. We're not going to have a middle school. <laughs> but we're not, right. that's that's but no, we middle do have school a middle school in the district. No. Yes. Okay, so they're we have considering. school in the district. Yeah. And this this was yes. before, before we became an RSU. So we consolidated as an RSU. So the RSU does have a middle, it will have a middle school is what it is. Whether it's in Wyndham or Raymond, we still have that, that school. So does the high school, can the I, high school that's there isn't, does, that the, one doesn't the count? The vote in 2009 was solely for the high school. Yes. Uh, okay. Because Raymond has always had choice before and we okay. kept it in before we consolidated because we had to write that into the consolidation agreement. Okay. So there seems to be confusion. Maybe I'll ask my question one more time. Yeah. <clears throat> so, my children live in Raymond today. They go to Gray New Gloucester High School today through an agreement on, between Superintendent Howell and Mr. King, Dr. King, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> in Gray. No, if, 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 if they're at the high school level, they have yeah. a choice. If they're in high they school, go. they have cho there was choice because we, we had that locked in before we consolidated. So it can, once we consolidated, please, one, 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 once we consolidated, now you're on with the exception of the high school because that was that was essentially locked at that point that we had choice on high school. It was grandfathered in. Right, mm -hmm. but with the with the middle school and the others that falls under the consolidation rules. It says if there is a middle school in the RSU, which there will be, then that is what needs to be used. The only option you would have would be the superintendent's agreement. With Greg. Like I said, yes. the answer is yes. That, that's what I want to clarify. Like I said, I, I don't know the language that you're speaking. I think we're saying the same thing. So Each let me individual just, case. It, let me make it yeah. like a level I can understand. For a student who will be at the middle school level when this Jordan Small School closes and all our the students would otherwise be going to win the middle school. Would it be possible to make an application for a superintendent's agreement for those particular children whose parents so desire yeah. potentially that they would say, well, I'm going to go to gray high school anyway. How about I go to eighth grade at gray middle school? Mm -hmm. That's a yes. Yeah. And it's dependent upon whether or not that middle school accepts just because of space. Right. And Same thing with choice. Quite sure you'd be happy to hear that because that's one less kid that you have to deal with being on the bus for an hour, right? So seems like a good idea. But this well, many I, I, fact is mm. not an automatic decision. And it's There's yearly. many factors. It has to be agreed upon by the receiving school. Mm -hmm. And it has to be agreed upon between the, both superintendents, you know, and what's best for the kid. Am I right? Or... So it's not an automatic, <laughs> I want my kid to go over there. I, I understand that, Joe. Thanks. I, I tried to use yeah. the word, would there be an opportunity for an application yeah. for that type of scenario? It sounds like the answer is yes. There's an opportunity, but there's no guarantee. I just wanted to find out if the answer was a hard no. It right. sounds like it's not yeah. that. Right. Yeah. That's all. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. I was going to oh, get back. Sorry. To one more of Donna's. Do I'm you want to go? I can wait. Yeah. You can no, go. No, that's okay. fine. No, you go ahead. All right. My name is Natalie Morse. I'm a Raymond resident. I live on Cape Road, um, and my children will be children that get picked up at 5:50 um, on the bus. Um, so I've heard the bus statements and that there's not really a full plan for that, um, but I think that we need a little bit more information because how can we vote or you know make that decision without a real plan in place um i am a working mother i'm a nurse um, i work 40 plus hours a week i don't know how as a family we will be able to pick up or handle sports or anything and i totally appreciate your comments about being an involved parent how can i be an involved parent in windham 30 minutes away, and then also still have a child here in second grade when my child is in fifth grade there. Um, how will the buses work? Have you guys been down 302 on Friday in May or June before school gets out? Raymond Cape, the only way in and out of there, 302. It takes 45 minutes 
from the center of Wyndham. And I don't know how buses will make it in time to come back to the middle school or the elementary school or how we're gonna handle that drop off time. Not really a question, but I think we need more information before the vote. Um, also, um, I think we haven't heard anything about class size um, and that's a topic we really need to talk about. Um, you know, I also, I lived in Wyndham and we chose to move to Raymond specifically for the middle school, small class. Um, I actually went to Fiber Academy. I was part of um, SAD 72. Absolutely appreciated your comment mm -hmm. about the bus. Was on the bus for an hour and 15 minutes. Um, I was a sixth grader riding on the bus with 12th graders. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you about my education. <laughs> Let me tell you about the things I saw, sexually inappropriate things on the bus as a sixth grader. Um, so that's really concerning about having a 10 year old on the bus with a high schooler. Um, and that's a whole other topic in itself. Um, and I think with class size, I also would really like to hear about um, potential budget changes or what the plan is for um, kids who wanna get involved in sports, chorus, band, um, any sort of extracurricular activity. Here in um, Raymond, kids have opportunity to try out for whatever they want um, and really get involved in whatever they want. I know at the primary schools in Wyndham, kids are getting um, cut from chorus or not having the opportunity in early, as early as third grade. So what are the opportunities gonna be adding these 200 plus kids into Wyndham? These kids aren't gonna be able to try all the things that they wanna do, get involved in all the things that they wanna do. And then how does that affect the high school? You know, these kids aren't gonna wanna do these sports. Raymond is pretty much gonna be shut out from doing anything with the Wyndham kids. I'll stop there. So let me start. Right. Can I just talk about class sizes? Yes. Because one of the um, one of the things that has been difficult with programming in Raymond has been class sizes, uh, because you have some years in which you have 48 kids, and so there's 24 kids spread against two teachers, and then there'd be a year we have 52 students, and they might be spread across three. So. It's not always necessarily, sometimes the class sizes in Raymond are a little better and sometimes they're actually a little bit worse depending upon the size of the group that's going through. So um, class sizes have remained manageable. There's actually class size policy in RSU 14 for the board, which is um, looking at maintaining manageable class sizes. Our class sizes actually elementary through high school have been very manageable. Uh, and so I don't anticipate any changes that, that would take place with that. Uh, as far as athletics to be able to, or music or drama or other things, um, to be able to offer a rich variety of um, opportunities for kids where things that might not be able to be offered here, um, I think what field hockey kids were traveling down. Um, so, and the opportunity for kids to have jazz band or other chorus pieces or um, other opportunities through just it grows uh, expansively as you go to a larger school and have the opportunities that go along with that so it doesn't necessarily mean that kids aren't going to be in in that um, again having the opportunity to be the principal of the one consolidated school i couldn't tell you who was from wyndham and who was from raymond uh, they were Wyndham High School kids. They were my kids that were there and activities and things that they wanted to do and get involved with. Uh, it was an opportunity. Um, and we hear comments from kids that, you know, I wish I'd gotten to know some of my Raymond peers and my Wyndham peers earlier. So just to offer that up from my experience in the eight years at the high school. Was your comment, just to clarify, that there would be a certain number of spots in some cases and that more students, you would have less opportunity to do those? Um, yeah, I just wanted to clarify that as well. I think the other thing that I've learned being a resident here and having the kiddos is just that there aren't as many sporting opportunities. And so we are um, thankfully have a growing parks and rec department that has offered at the community level more opportunities that way. And I think that some of our um, parents here tonight talked about basketball, talked about those things that Mr. Crocker is putting <laughs> into our community. Um, I also know um, that the other half of my peers are doing competitive sports and they're going to Wyndham or another mm -hmm. town. So I, I kind of feel like it's split, but I just want to make sure I clarify what you're getting at there. Um, there was a comment about the buses being mixed grade five to 12. 
Um, is, is there any commentary that as far as I, it's, I've never thought of it? Is it something that is generally pretty common in districts if you're running routes and that's the population that you're serving? Okay, I just want to make sure that the notes that we take back for transportation are accurate. Um, and I think with that, Jody, it's the time on the bus being exposed sure. to that, yep. you know, that great level. That would be, that's really the understand. statement. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was reading an article and we had some public feedback, I think in one of the October sessions, um, talking about adding Wi-Fi to the bus. And, you know, the idea of product, there's a lot of literature on it. It's just, you know, the productivity aspect of a student being able to do their homework, but then the idea that every student has a cell phone now, you know, so there things do change over time that might have that might have been an efficiency that could have been introduced or thought of in one way in the past <laughs> that today creates a whole different opportunity. Um, did anybody else want to respond to? Well, Raymond couldn't even feel the little league team. No. So we had a merge with Greg and Gloucester. So I, I mean, I, I I don't feel as though that statement is appropriate here, um, especially somebody who really got involved in Little League and has talked to Parks and Rec about that. So I don't really think that's part of this conversation. But I appreciate that. Um, I do have a couple more questions coming from my from my friends who are listening. Um, so wondering. Um, if it was considered, because I heard you at the beginning of the conversation talk about um, how it was decided to move the fifth and sixth graders to the middle school in Wyndham mm -hmm. where it's not now. Was it ever explored to keep fourth, fifth, and sixth the same and then sending seventh and eighth grade to the middle school so that the younger kids could still kind of stay separate? Um, and then that would open up more room for pre-K as well. Um, and then also, I was hoping you could talk a little bit more about, um, you know, I've heard the middle school in Wyndham really needs a big revamp um, and some work done there. And I'm still not clear what Jordan Small needs to, if that's like a full revamp, um, and is that 100% mandatory if we did, um, didn't move to that middle school? So which one do you want? I get to, which one first? Whatever you want to go with. <laughs> What's the first? Mm -hmm. Give me the first one again. Five six. The five yeah. six. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually looked at for a four five separate building within a building, and then a six seven eight four staying here. Wyndham four five, and then looking at the possibility of a of a Manchester closure. That was one idea uh, to take a look, and that that didn't move any further. Um, part of the design of the building is actually to keep the fifth and sixth graders within their own wings and to have those connections um, so that they are participating in their own sections. It's even the way the building is set up is that there isn't a lot of cross movement between grade levels so that really this is the fifth grade wing. The fifth grade wing, these are where the fifth graders are. So um, we did approach the four or five. Mm -hmm. Uh, Manchester option with the state construction team and that's something they they said no that they wouldn't go with with anything of that and they also would not go with the idea of two schools under one roof uh, we really pushed at that for the subsidy piece and what was the second question I'm sorry um, talking about oh go ahead sir should have written this down <laughs> no that's okay um, the revamp between uh, oh. Wyndham versus Jordan Small yeah, um, so again, I'll go back to Wyndham Middle School, which has been kept up quite a bit over the years as far as um, what can be done that's non-structural. Uh, snow load, engineering requirements, and things like that have changed over the years, and a roof truss system that was built in the 70s does not meet code for where we are right now. Any time that you open up anything in a building, that also means that all systems need to be updated, which includes sprinkler systems, electrical, all those other components. It would be a significant cost in order to be able to do that for Jordan Small. It's not a sprinkled building, um, so you would require to do that, would have to do the electrical in it. Uh, some of the space and some of the structures, because even as we were starting, we started early on in a visioning process for, it's great that you have a project, but we wanted to make sure that it was the right project for our kids. Uh, having Jordan Small staff first start on a Jordan Small revamp um, and looking at a brand new window middle school and it it became difficult because structurally the way that the building was designed and Jordan Small was built as an elementary school was not built as a middle school it was made into a middle school 
some of the common team areas, the project base areas, the build spaces, the other things that you would do for student engagement, the middle level just don't exist. So it would require some additions. We looked at the possibility if we were to do that with additions in some of the courtyards and then some extensions off of where the office are uh, to do some of those spaces. But uh, I think we got about six to eight months into that process and that's when envisioning when the state came and said it's time for your project to start moving forward and then would you want to consider Raymond and then we went through that process so uh, it would require some additional spills some additional square footage I can't give you an exact square footage um, putting in a sprinkler system and redoing an electrical system we've had problems with uh, even the portable air conditioners there with not being able to handle in the electrical load uh, it would not support HVACs and I don't know if anyone has followed but we recently, as the RSU, brought up three-phase power from Plains Road because even trying to bring climate control to Raymond Elementary, we don't have enough power there to even do it. Uh, so we're doing some significant investments in RES. You would have to do the same thing. So I know it's a roundabout answer, but uh, $30 million would not be out of the question for a renovation of Jordan Small. Uh, Yarmouth did four elementary schools, some little projects four years ago. It was $52 million. Um, and it was not a complete revamp. So again, it's tough to tell with state with construction dollars. Okay. Sorry, round nope. answer. No, nope. that's okay. Thank you. Do you want to come up? Okay. Good afternoon, uh, evening, I should say at this point, Ken Clark from Wyndham. Um, I'll follow up on a couple of things. I feel you know, these guys are gonna lose the opportunity to enjoy their kids close proximity to middle school. It's some of the best years and half of the years you have to spend with your kids. And uh, that's quite a thing. It's really not good. Uh, what's gonna happen to the current middle school? <coughs> Wyndham, sorry, it's not um, safe. Uh, and it's too costly to rebuild, so what's going to become of it? Sorry, pardon me. No, sorry. Um, if the referendum does pass, the mm -hmm. buildings would revert back to the town in both Wyndham and Raymond, the, the town, and those would decide what they would do with them at that time. With the Can Wyndham Middle School? That? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That's okay. Go um, <laughs> I thought he was going to. So for Wyndham so Middle I. School, as I mentioned <laughs> earlier, uh, significant amount of engineering and reinforcement have been done. And think of the three barns. Okay. You've okay. Got the gym well, barn, you've got the cafeteria barn, and you have the classroom barn. The classroom barn um, needs significant work. That's the one that has a structural issue. The other ones would serve great as a place for community dinners and community basketball, uh, but does not have the flexibility of spaces. And so that would be your center office area and your gym. So part of the school is going to remain dangerous then. Is, isn't there also different standards for schools and community yeah. centers? Yep. You might want to... well, how can it be so safe it for be... some and not for others? You're it saying wouldn't... some kids are going to be jeopardized and some not? So if no, that's not what I'm saying. On them? If I could speak to Jordan Small. No, I want to stay on this one if I could. So when a middle school wouldn't be part of RSU 14 at that point, right. it would be right, owned right. by the town of Wyndham. As so they would make decisions based on how they would want to right. use that building. Right. But as a taxpayer, there's gonna be an increase in taxes already. My, my personal taxes on my house went up $4,000 last year. Not, not that's what they are, they went up $4,000. Um, so understanding that all these apartments that are going in in Wyndham in the high density residential C1 zone, which is you want businesses in C1 because they're less impact on municipalities as far as the expenses go. So right now Wyndham is going through a whole bunch of apartments, they're trying to put them everywhere in Wyndham. So again, that's going to add to the cost administrative, municipality, fire, rescue, police, never mind traffic, because we all know what residential does to traffic. Um, <clears throat> I don't see any big picture in Wyndham where the taxes are going to go down. So I'm very curious to how much money the town plans to put into this building. Sure. I mean, the we, town, we of Wyndham, town of Wyndham, town of Wyndham, yeah, yeah, Wyndham Council would zero window. Okay, the kind you of you point though. I hate that. to see us say this building is not safe, but then it's going to be used for something else. Well, it's, it's going to have to be anyway. Another another thing there. Um, I'd asked Chris a while ago for you for just clarification on all these numbers are great. I'm not a great numbers guy by any means, detail anyway. <clears throat> How much money? And I asked specifically of you. What percentage of my tax dollars go to the school right now? 
say my taxes are 10,000, which they're not, especially if you take in some business uh, buildings I own in Wyndham. Um, say the $10,000, how much of that goes to the school right now? RSU doesn't set the mill rate. I don't but know. How much don't, money are you taking so out of my taxes I, to run the schools? I don't know, Ken. Ken? Yes. Question for you. Yes. I know on our Raymond tax bill, it says this yeah, much it says goes right on to it. Yep. the town, this much goes to the school district. Doesn't your bill do Here. that? Yeah, your bill will say it. it's the first one, usually the school one. It breaks okay. it down from county, municipal, and school. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here on this, it shows 63% goes to the out of our taxes, I guess. And there's also a debt. So is it safe to say, looking at this chart, that 60% of our tax dollars, if I pay 10000 in taxes, and $6,000 goes to the school? Yep. I don't know okay. what that chart is. It's the budget. From the It'll say on your tax bill, though, exactly down to the dollar how much. I, I'm just trying to make it because a lot of people might not know that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to make it because we hear all these numbers in the school and how, you know, it's a wonderful thing. I like nice buildings. I want kids to be protected. That's a little scary these days. We have to build buildings with bulletproof glass. That's certainly something we didn't have to I do in the past. I think Raymond at 72% goes yeah. to the school. Mm -hmm. 72. So there's a lot of taxpayers that don't even have kids that go to school in a town. Yeah. So if you look at how much money people are paying in a town to support a school, it's off the charts. You can send a kid to a private school for a fraction of that amount if you say you live in a town over 20 years. So I just look at how much public schools are costing us overall. It, it, the numbers just don't add up in the big picture. And I really, when I see a $171 million building building and a $56 million annual budget to run it, and all kinds of people who do get taxed out of their homes when they're older. There's a homeless crisis in the world around everywhere. And a lot of it's because people can't pay their taxes. People need to put up a railing on their house or redo their chimney or redo their roof, but they can't because their taxes are too high. So I just think in a big picture, there is so much money being spent on this stuff in a quarter of a billion dollars when you look at it. And we can say we're getting all this money, but it's all taxpayer money. At some point in another state, our tax dollars are going to get them some grant that they're going to get to pay for their school. So we're paying for all this stuff as taxpayers. And um, I, I just think it's something to think about. And I, I really feel as we looked at the options of schools and stuff that a lot of us should start talking to the state about uh, school choice and have our dollars follow our kids where we want to bring them to school. There's a lot of people pulling their kids out of Wyndham because they don't like what's going on there. And I can give some examples. You mentioned some of the education that kids get on the bus as far as sexuality. This is this is what's in the library at the Wyndham School. Okay. Uh, all right. I, I don't think it's a No, this is very no, no, we're talking about but, schools. Yeah, but that we're talking about building a new middle school and Raymond consolidating with the middle yeah. school. Yeah, no, this we're is the library about the curriculum in the library. Right. Well the library is two million dollars of our tax dollars. Okay. And if you want to find the stuff, you can find it right in the library. This one's especially interesting because it's a male and a younger boy. Um, some people say this isn't child pornography, but it actually is exactly that. It's <laughs> cartoons of children, okay? Someone mentioned a poster. Um, <clears throat> this poster says, and it was up in the middle school, my 11-year-old took a picture of it. If your gender pronoun has name or name has changed, you may request an update to your school records. The name gender request form is available at this website. Your school counsel is available if you have any questions. So this was up, and my daughter could have literally gone to a counselor and changed her name. They refer to it as a dead name in school files. And um, so this is some of the things that you can look forward to at our school <coughs> team. <clears throat> Do you have any more questions on the building? I'll, I'll take care of myself, Gail. It's okay. You tired of listening to me? I'm tired of listening to you. We, we like to everything. stay on topic. This yeah. is a four. Well, it's about honest. school and where our money's spent. It's our money that you're spending. On the building in front of us. <clears throat> um, $2 million in the library. That doesn't account for the books. I don't know how much our tax dollars go to buy these books. Furniture. There's also three librarians that will hand the stuff out that we pay for. Um, <clears throat> I guess that's most of the points I wanted to make. Ken? Yes. Um, so I appreciate you talking about how, regardless of where the money comes from, it's all taxpayer money, because that's absolutely true. Yep. Um, but you actually pointed out very well 
the primary reason that we voted the way we did because we are trying to put together a fiscally responsible school system for the taxpayers of Raymond and Wyndham. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yep. And to do that, based on the information we had at the time, it was to close Jordan Small and merge middle schools. That was the fiscally responsible thing to do. So thank you for pointing that out. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> as far as um, specific curriculum or items that are in the library, that is a topic for a different day. And you know that you and I are on the same page on that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not what we're he here to speak about tonight. Well, I think, again, we're taxpayers. We get our right to freedom of speech. We should be able to say what we want to say the few opportunities we get in the public. So I appreciate absolutely where you're coming from. Um, there's a couple of people running for school board, Don Miller, Justin Wynott. I highly recommend you folks um, look at them and consider them as candidates. We can't vote. I know, well, there might be some people from Wyndham listening. I have no. a right to freedom of speech. I really do. So I guess that's all I have to say tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Howell, one of the questions that Donna had asked um, was about bringing students from Wyndham into Raymond. Uh, my understanding is that this project would bring over 700 students from, if there's 700 students plus in Wyndham for this new middle school build. Am I on track with that count with Manchester? Maybe I'm a bit low actually with Manchester grade five and then <laughs> the number of students at Wyndham Middle School, um, the capacity. The other thing I just, not related, I just realized recently that um, there's 24 families that drive from Wyndham up to Raymond for pre-K right now because they can't take the bus. I just found that out the other day, actually, in terms of that lottery piece. Um, not the same numbers, I get it, not really relevant to your comment, but um, there was a question of why couldn't Wyndham Middle School students come to fill up Jordan Small Middle School? Is that something we can um, just So I, I was not superintendent when that was discussed. I was principal of the high school when that was discussed, so I was not involved with the conversation, so I don't have an answer for sure. why the decision was made at the time. Um, as far as students, there's 192 students right now at Jordan Small. There's about 590 students at Wyndham Middle. Uh, grade levels in Wyndham have tracked anywhere from 180 students to 225 to 240 is the typical spans in Raymond. They've tracked from 29 students in a grade level to as many as 55, 56 is, is where we're at. So some definitely some swings that were there. And I think this goes back to the other question about class sizes uh, with some of the swings that you see there. Uh, so bringing in, if you go roughly 200 students per grade level um, on the Wyndham side with four grade levels, about 800 so, and about 170 coming from Raymond, 190. <laughs> So right around that 10, I think the last time I checked, it was like 1058, 1060 mm -hmm. would be a projected opening that's there. Uh, and just speaking to, because Raymond does host our, our two pre-K classrooms, uh, which is set up on, there's 24 Wyndham students and eight Raymond students that are there. Uh, there are a couple bus pickup locations where parents can go and get the bus and then come up. Uh, that they can do that. That that's at all helpful. Please go to the camp. The you have to go up. It's not being picked up at home. Sorry, we no, just. No, we, I, I just. There's. Uh, there's. We're not answering the question, which was, what, when, why Wyndham said no, we're not willing to bring our kids to Raymond. Why? Is Raymond being set, being told no? Nope, your kids need to go to Wyndham. That was the question that was asked. Chris, how many kids are in Raymond right now? The Raymond student population. He just said about 192 in Jordan Small. That's just at the at, at Jordan Small. Small. There's about the elementary. I think. Uh, yeah, I think it's. I want to say 260 something are at RES right now. So in total, you're looking at less than 500 kids in Raymond right now. Well, plus high school, I mean, obviously you've got. Some kids that choose to go to Wyndham High School, and we've typically tracked about 80% of Raymond Choice kids go to Wyndham High School because of the transportation. Yeah. Uh, and then we have kids so that go. 150 kids yeah. in high school. So you're talking like 600 kids. Yeah. 
which has been the Raymond school age population since the 1980s. It's been around 600 kids. There was a projection when we were building uh, the elementary school that it was gonna go up to 700. It never got there, it was always 600 and it has been constant over the last 30 years. So. We have a comment on Zoom. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. And, um, oops. It is, again, from Stephen Knapp, hats off all the, all the Raymond Selectmen. You are professional and respectful and careful about all your residents. Some Wyndham Council members should take lessons on how you do business. Thank you for all your effort. <laughs> wow, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and then she was up before you, sorry, Louise. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Um, good evening. My name's Anne Marie Grenier, and I'm actually from Wyndham. Okay, so I have some um, thoughts on this. I've been watching the you know, the process for some time. Can you time. talk a little bit louder into that microphone? Okay. Thanks. It's on. It's, it's on. Okay, so I have some questions on the process. Are, are you able to hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. In regards to the amount of money the state has committed themselves to is $131 million. Okay. And the local portion would be somewhere around 39 what would happen if we said, we don't want to spend the local, let's just spend the state por portion? Mm -hmm. Is that a possibility? Could we perhaps think a little more pragmatically and reasonable, take a more reasonable approach? Say, do we really need, back to Joe, you were saying when you grew up, you know, it was easy, you could go down to what your experience is for you as a high school student, right? What it was like commuting. Well, well I, I, it was my kids. Your kids, okay, your kids, and what you what that was like for you. Well, we can think about it. What we've all had ourselves as high schoolers. Um, I don't know, but do you think pragmatic and responsible approach to spending that thirty nine million? I, I'd like to see that just go out the window. Let's just spend the state portion. I mean, do we really need an indoor track, a chorus room, an orchestra room, a band room? A 600-seat auditorium with a balcony? Do we need a pickleball court? Do we need a stadium field, a soccer field, a lacrosse field, a field hockey field, a varsity baseball field? Do we need a, whatever? In one of the videos I watched, Chris, of you, you talked about a, a bowl field. I'm not sure what that is. A utility field, a softball field. The, the list goes on. It's a full competition baseball field, basketball courts, a playground, a greenhouse. I mean, the list goes on and on. I just think that um, this is not West Palm Beach here. <laughs> I mean, I'll I just tend to be a little more pragmatic. I don't need long, drawn out, over talked responses to this thought either. It's just. Why don't we not spend that 39 million? And you can scale back the project, get something good. No one's saying it doesn't, something doesn't need to be done. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm just saying, let's be reasonable. This is probably not the time of the place or the economic situation to be doing this. People are out of work. People are having a hard time making their ends meet. I really don't want a big long answer, Chris. I've sat here for, two hours and I mean, I, I appreciate all the, the knowledge and the research you've done, but sometimes it does come down to basics. I can respond if you want. Um, when I joined the build committee, the committee had already been formed and it was made up of a number of individuals. And having been asked to join that after the decision was made to merge the two towns, that process uh, revealed itself to me in the sense that there's a team of people that were made up of many different uh, backgrounds and expertises. And it was the cumulative um, opinion of that team over the course of a year that these were things that they wanted to offer to the community to vote on. I think your point is well taken to see if there was a separate local only option on the referendum. That was not the collective vote of the committee to separate the local only portions. 
because there's sustainability pieces where there's insulation and three pane windows that have a benefit. And then there's other things, as you point out, that are less tangible that to, to see as a benefit. So that was the work of the committee making the recommendation the school board voted to uh, approve and to write the referendum with one single choice. So this, is, could, uh, this is not just a middle school. Yeah, this but, is really a government facility, facility and but, community action hot spot to, yeah, to, and i'd like to still hear okay. why can't we knock off the state okay, I'll, part and, and I'll the, give you, the I'll, local I'll, I'll, excuse I'll, I'll me the you, local i'd like to see the local piece go and just spend the state money i understand i'll give Rolf you the, i'll give the you the i'll give i'll give you this the quick answer to what you're asking for no you can't just build it based on the state's money because the state does not fund all the all the pieces so we you, don't want all the pieces you don't want you don't want desks. You don't want chairs. No, they don't. You they must don't have fund, missed the they list. They don't fund a lot of those. The chorus so room, the orchestra room, the board room, the six hundred seat no, auditorium. I understand, I understand that, but you said you wanted a simple house. answer. Could you just do the do the hundred and thirty and not not do there's local share? No, you can't. You got to have some. There's local share that has to be there too. Now, what is that portion? What you're asking is. Do you still, you know, what you're what you're trying to ask, but not asking is, do you, you know, is the 39 sacrosanct, or could that be cut back some? That's that may be the root of your question, but the but to say, can you build, could you build that for the hundred and, you know, for the, the 130 or the hundred and the the money just from the state? No, you could not because you'd have an incomplete building. Well, so, that's well, silly to say that. Come on, a Jordan small school. That gym on Jordan Small School, oh, right. that's an adult-sized gym that was voted separately from, from the referendum for the school because the state funded part of that school building at Jordan Small back in the 80s. The gym was a separate local vote that the townspeople voted for. Um, no, guys, you have to go up, please. And this I, is like six or seven times. Well, we hear from that, yes. Meeting I went to, you had an excellent chart that showed the breakdown of each yeah, he thing just, locally funded. He just had that one up. The green and the blue. The green and, blue. The, green and yep. the blue. Maybe yep. that would help show yep. what local people are paying for at once. And if I, I'll well, give you. There's that, but let's not Can lose I, sight of the basic bottom line of my question is we don't want all the extras. We're all for a good, safe, secure school but three gym spaces a greenhouse okay i'm letting the raymond people know that there are people in wyndham that are not into the extravagant monstrosity of which is the complex <laughs> so, May I? So, so, i'm not even gonna say okay. it anymore I'm if I could, uh, yeah so, so whoever's at the microphone uh we'll just give due courtesy please if that's okay um, thank you thank you for your point do you have any more comments or questions that you want to no, i would have just i would just to? um you know make it clear yeah. that i think there's room to trim can i I'd say go back to I the drawing the board mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't mind if you answer but it's just they're very long-winded and they don't always come to the conclusion <laughs> okay so first of all the band, chorus, orchestra, rum are being state funded. That's actually in the 131. The All the athletic fields that you listed out, that's within the 131. That's already listed there. You cannot build a school based on the state formula uh, because the spreadsheet does not include hallways, mechanicals, all the other components that are there. Mm. So there are components out of every school build that you're going to have a local component. And yes, the auditorium, and yes, the running track, those are local additional things that the community is going to need to decide on, but you cannot build straight on what's allocated to the state formula. So, Chris, is it safe to say that the state's willing to pay a percentage of the total project, but not 100% of the project? Correct. So if you want to have enough bleachers in your gym for the kids, you actually have to pay for some of the bleachers. If you want to have the end lines on a basketball court to meet standards, then you actually have to pay that component. I'm sorry. I just feel like that is so disingenuous. This project is humongous. It's a monstrosity of a middle school. Four grades? I have no skin in the game except I'm a taxpayer. I don't have kids in the school. Grandkids have plenty of friends that have kids in the school. And young moms, older moms, senior moms, middle-aged moms, families, they do not, they see that this is a grotesque amount to spend. 
It's like someone gave RSU group a credit card and said, go run with it, get that whatever you want, and then we might trim it, but we might not. And the taxpayers don't want all of what you're selling. Well, that's, that's it. I, mean, I think that's, that's fair about. feedback for the build committee and for um, the school board team. If the referendum doesn't pass next week, there will be an obligation mm -hmm. to reevaluate not only the local only portion, but in to some very limited extent areas that can't be. I mean, concept design and all of that's not not a choice to redesign, but that local only piece would have to be reevaluated in that four to six week period and come back out to the voters to say, does this meet your needs? Will you pass this? Yes or no. But, but it's still true that the state won't pick up 100% of the cost. Correct. So if, if the project goes from 171 and 39 to like 150 and 20, it's still 150 and 20. It's They won't pick up 100% of it. So just so people understand that difference. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have just a quick comment on Zoom, if you don't mind, uh, or is it a question, pardon me. Jeez. It is a question. Okay. It's, I would love to know, and this is from Courtney Edwards, I'm sorry. Um, it says, I would love to know if the indoor track is covered under the state portion, or is the indoor tract cost laid upon the taxpayers? The yeah. indoor track is a local only uh, portion for this referendum. Louise Lester, San Harley Lane, and Raymond. Um, I found a discussion tonight. Very interesting, and in that this lady is the only one that's talking about dollars mm -hmm. and not wanting to spend the dollars. The rest of the people here seem to be t working about, uh, wondering about logistics getting their kids to school, picking them up, and this sort of thing. And I can't believe that with the benefit of this marvelous new school and the education that our kids will get because of it, the logistics can't be worked out. Whether it's adding buses or getting parent groups together that are going to bus their kids, however you decide to do it. The fact is, the education your kid's going to get out of this school the laboratories and the other rooms that are there for their enjoyment as well as education aren't worth the work to get the logistics taken care of. I think that it can be worked out somewhere, maybe more buses, maybe a, a, the superintendent can come up with a better time schedule for the school. Um, maybe an idea will come up which will help you get your kids to and from school and you to your work and whatever else you have to do during the day. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Sure. Is that your daughter too? Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. <laughs> My name is still Tom Goldieski. <laughs> <laughs> We've still lived in this town for 15 years, and without referring to anybody by name, I will um, echo the previous comment that $170 million for a school is outrageous, especially given what we've seen from the performance of our school administration and our school board, and I think it should be voted down and simply on that view alone because I don't have much confidence in what's going on today, and I certainly don't have much confidence in what's gonna be going on in the future. And from a financial point of view, which I said previously is not really where I intend to send my kids anyway, I don't think it's a good idea. And for the reasons that were uh, spoken to by Anne Marie, there's a lot of things in here that are way beyond the scope of, I think, what's reasonable. And um, it's unfortunate that it's so far down the road in this process, and we've, <clears throat> Missed a lot of opportunities, I think, to have our, have our voices heard, which I'm guilty of that for sure. Um, but I didn't want to let that comment pass because it's, I think, a little bit outrageous. This is um, this is a lot of money, and every penny of this money, whether it's local or state, does come. You're asking me, do I want to? to come out of this pocket or that pocket. They're both my pockets. So let's stop pretending that there's state money and local money, there's taxpayer money, which is not yours. Thank you. Thank you.
Good evening. My name is Alyssa Messer. I'm a resident of Raymond. Um, I'd like to start by saying thank you first for serving our community as selectmen and as board members. It's not an easy job to make decisions on our behalf as community members. There's a lot of stuff thrown at you that you have to make decisions on. Um, the school board, I've spoken to you before representing us. It's been a tough year. Um, thank you for the long meetings. Jody, you referred online today the countless hours you spent preparing for having answers to us um, tonight. Thank you. It's not easy to go through to be prepared for all this, to do research you've referenced a couple times, reading studies about other schools and other areas to have knowledge for us. Um, I would ask those that attend meetings to ask yourself the questions before you make comments. If $170 million is ridiculous, if you haven't done the amount of research that this team in front of you has. Um, because I think you would probably find with construction costs and people that are in the industry, it's probably not that ridiculous. If you've looked at other schools, I think being disrespectful to those who are helping us through the process is not helpful. Um, being respectful to one another and challenging each other. We've challenged each other. We've differed with each other, but we can do it in a respectful way. Um, I think it's a better example to our children who are in this process. I chose Raymond too for the same reason. I thought, I think you said that very nicely when you st stood up. Um, this was not the town that I was raised in here in Maine, but we chose this town because our hometowns were growing bigger than what we wanted as well. Nothing wrong with big towns, no, it's but it's a beautiful, yeah. it's a beautiful town to be a part of. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I will tell you on your note, um, my one of my children, I have three that go to three different schools, three different districts. <laughs> um, it's hard, but it, it can happen because of small community friends and families that help because of the town of Raymond. It is possible, and it is possible to have kids that have amazing opportunities because of schools like this but you have to pull together as a community which you do when you form friendships in a community like this so i just want to say thank you to the school members who are here who've invested a lot of time into this process years that went before you those who went before you that have invested time and i also would like to make a request i came here tonight because i was very bothered that it felt like we as residents got skipped over in the beginning of this process. Yes, you may have assumed that we wanted to stay with the RSU because of that gap of time of yes, we wanted to stay with the RSU, yes. And Chris came back and said, this is really unfortunate timing. You guys voted to stay with the RSU and the state is pushing me to come back and ask you right now and he did so very humbly and said, listen, this is not my timing. I remember the meeting vividly thinking, oh my gosh, we just voted to stay with the RSU and now the state is coming and saying, you have to ask Raymond if they want to be part of this build. It was very unfortunate timing, but I would like to ask you as selectmen, please don't assume if there's an opportunity to come to us as voters, please come to us as voters and let the people choose. Nobody, no four positions, whatever names are there, should make the choice for the people of Raymond. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm gonna ask from in the future. It should be the body of the town making the choice because this is all of our town. We're, we are where we are and we're gonna make the choices we're gonna make, but when you're making decisions that are big and impactful in ways like this, I ask that you consider not assuming and bringing it before the people because it's it's a decision that we should make together. And as you go forward, board members as well, if there are decisions that you need feedback on, that I think it's really important to make sure that it's not the seat making the decision, but the body making the decision to vote. But thank you for your service very much. 
Um, is it my recollection correct that there wasn't time for a public vote and that's why we had to do the public It was, it was in October 21. Hmm. So you couldn't get it on the ballot. Right. Remember. It was by the time the state right. did this, there wasn't enough time to put it on a ballot before the deadline for a response. So that's why we did it the way we did it. So another clarification, I guess I'm just asking on. So whether we vote it yes or no on, on the select board, say in another two years, say the middle school does, um, the, the Wyndham Middle School is built and everything like that, we are paying for it no matter what. The school board still has the option without coming to the select board at any point to say we're closing Jordan Small down because we need to cut costs mm -hmm. and save. Am I correct on that? So like in another year or two? So and it wasn't a vote of the, the selectmen here? Because like you mentioned earlier, it's a final vote of the school board. But if you guys have to cut costs and be able to put out a fisc fiscally responsible budget, and Jordan Small only has 100 students in, in the whole building or whatever, it would be the school board that says, let's make a recommendation to bring the Raymond kids over to Wyndham to the new middle school. So, so any new any new board members coming in in another year if this if we didn't take the vote and I know it's like a moot point, but again, every You're time if the referendum fails and they build a new Wyndham Middle School there or locally funded or they renovate mm -hmm. and Jordan Small Middle School remains intact with its remediation plans. That's the circumstance that you're describing? I'm saying the school board at any point, anybody can come in and can still say, look, this building is not being, it's too much money being put into this building. We're gonna need to do some rearranging of some so kids. If I can just answer, if the referendum passes, both middle schools will close. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's where we're at. That was the vote that was taken in 21. Yep. Um, if the referendum does not pass and um, you know, there's there's no more project, uh, a closure of a school based on a board outside of a construction project would have to go to the voters. Boards have authority within new construction to close schools. They don't have authority with outside if it's a disused. It's all still in section 4101 or whatever one that it is um, in state statute. So that that component that would would be there. But as far as schools closing and merging into one. Um, the concept that's been approved, all those different components, again, those six or seven votes have already happened. So it would require an unwinding of all of those. Yeah. Okay. We all set? Okay. Thank you. Um, my name's Heather Siragi, and I currently live in Scarborough, but I'm building a new home in Wyndham, which is almost done. So I'm here out of um, interest because Scarborough does have a $171 million bond on ours, um, a $160 million bond, it's totally local, versus your 171 here. And as a frame of reference, which I think might be interesting for people here to know, um, Forbes does say that the average rate of inflation over the last 10 years is 1.88, which we know is a joke, and but more recently, 8 to 10%. So um, in Scarborough, we I was there at the grand opening in 2014 of our new grade three, four, five school, which is enormous. We have a big population. And that school cost an outrageous $35 million. And at the time, people were horrified at that price. And um, I couldn't believe that Scarborough came up with a $160 million proposal nine years later. So even if the rate of inflation had gone up 10% a year, or you know, you'd by say double to 70 million from the 35 million, we're at 160 million. So I'm not sure where these prices are coming from, but they don't make sense to me. And I'm surprised and actually shocked that the state of Maine approved 130 million for this. That's an outrageous amount of money that um, I've spoken to other people that are chairs of school boards and are very involved with new school construction in their districts from Northern Maine and couldn't believe it. So I know that the cost of uh, building is very high because I'm building a new home and I see this firsthand, but this is really hard to believe. That's all. Mr. Howell, we had a, I think it was a, 
seventy dollars per square foot on two hundred sixty-two thousand square feet increase from the time from just two years ago. I think it was. This in the last two years. I'm just thinking the the most recent bid project, which is Skowhegan, um, which I think is at three hundred ninety dollars a square foot. Um, we're projected through again two independent at four thirty something a square foot. Um, and that was actually in the initial build was somewhere in 460 and working through with the um, cost estimators as far as what the actual best cost would be. Um, so construction prices definitely have exploded. Part of that is due to labor. Part of that is due to the cost of materials um, and has definitely outpaced inflation on other items. Um, I don't know the actual footprint size of the new Scarborough Elementary School. I've, I've not researched actual percentage of square foot. Sorry. Sorry. My microphone's, microphone's not working. working. No. They just in the back room. <laughs> no one will be able to hear anything on the recording. I was wondering what was going on. Totally fine. She just I like sitting by She wanted my, my hot seat. That's what she wanted. Why it really worked. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry about that. And also, the other thing that I th was thought was interesting talking with the architect um, was that the labor pool isn't just from Maine. It can come from states all surrounding, and that has had a really huge impact on this project in terms of going to bid to try to find someone to build this. And you might remember the project was supposed to open in 26. And then as we got through the same process, the, we were supposed to hit a June referendum, we missed it and here we are in November. So we're actually not too far behind, but we lost a year just in, in with the concept of trying to find labor and materials to be able to finish. Um, so we're a year pushed out as it is. Side stupid fact, but there's the, there's the long and the short of it on the square foot question. Um, thank you for your comment. Anybody else? Hi, I'm Jen Gillies. I moved to Raymond um, probably about four or five years ago now. Um, I have two kids in the system um, and we moved here also because of the small town feel. I grew up in a small town. My um, We had an elementary school that went to third grade and then we also had a fourth through sixth, which I loved because they all stayed on the same schedule. You know, mm -hmm. the kids in that grade were not kind of intermingled with the older kids. There was no bus riding with the high school kids. Um, Having children in the, the school system, I was a little bit reserved with knowing that fifth grade was going to even be with eighth graders. That made me very nervous. Um, but kind of backing up, Natalie had asked a question about talking about revamping the Jordan Middle School and, you know, maybe shuffling around the grades a little bit, changing the times that they go to school. So the fifth graders aren't riding with the 12th graders, things like that. If this passes, so just to kind of just kind of recap, if this referendum passes, both schools will be shut down. The two existing middle schools or three existing middle schools will be shut down and the they'll all move to the same school. If it fails, I know we have a few, few chances to kind of regroup, bring back a new plan. Um, does that include kind of just decreasing the cost of the school or just addressing why it failed? Because like, what 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 do you come back with mm. if it fails? Because yeah, I also you heard you why mention it's failing why it failing. You got well, you don't. Thirty percent of the people Unless failing on price, and then you got these people failing it on, on bus rides. Because I also heard you say that the, one of the possibilities, if it does fail, would be to revamp the Jordan Small Middle School and maybe the middle school in Wyndham and kind of keep them in those locations. Is that kind of what you were saying? That if that would only pass. be if zero referendum passes. Okay. Uh, and then you'd be looking to see what what dollar amount would you bring back to the voters for a project. It would be more than thirty nine million to be able to rehab both buildings. Okay. So I guess 
if it fails, that it just depends on why, and that's what is looked at at that no, time. We're not going to know why. That's the problem. Okay. Yeah. It's a yes or no vote. You're not. There's no like. No, because I want my kids in a... Well, that's the thing. So how do you like then come back with a new plan? Like what is, do you guys have backup plans for how you're going to come back at that if it doesn't pass? Kind of like this. So you're telling, you guys are telling how it's expensive. So you take that information from like meetings like this to say, cut that back. Take I think it. out of this group though, it's like five out of the group are saying it's too expensive and the other... 10 to 15 are saying smaller classrooms and shorter bus rides. If Half it was of them new. haven't even gotten up yet. But, so uh, I mean, think, you can tell. Yeah, no, that's like what, I mean, I know, I know this whole group right here, we're more concerned. We all have kids in the system right now and we all have, you know, we all moved here for a reason. And for me, the expense, of course, that's an issue, but it's not my top priority for for sure. You know, I'm concerned. I have a daughter with anxiety and she doesn't, you know, the big class size is the bigger school. She struggled going to the Raymond Elementary School. So, you know, even the thought of going to a bigger school where you have, you know, a little bit of a harder time navigating and you're with older kids where, you know, we all know that that has been a little bit more challenging lately, you know, putting fifth graders with 12th graders in a bus for a long time. That's, that's kind of scary. So, I think know, even I if think, that I think passes, it's an, a concern that was brought up tonight that yeah. needs to be addressed, even if it does pass. But I mean, you know, <clears throat> the concern, you know, the question on class size, I mean, you know, if Chris has addressed, you know, addressed this a little bit, you know, and maybe it needs a little bit more on how the, how the, the it's, consolidated and but yet separate for the for the different areas and whatnot the class sizes themselves are still governed by the by the uh, policies which say they're you know should they're not going to exceed X number of students but the way this it's designed when they come in they're going up into their area there they're not mingling with the with the overall general population on an ongoing time they'll still they'll be they will be some you know some mingling there if they have a major if they have a consolidated or a, uh, assembly or something like that then they'd all be together but in most times they're more in their segmented segmented areas which is more of a that small classroom that you're used to so the class sizes will be similar to the jordan Solomon middle school it'll be the same as they are now i mean part of the issue with with jordan small and even raymond elementary school is that we're never consistent with the number of teachers per grade level because often a, a teacher follows a grade level so se second grade might be big this year so you have three teachers but next year they go back down to two teachers and then the next year third grade is going to be three teachers and so trying to create some stability in, in class numbers but um, reasonable class numbers has always been a priority of the RC 14 board period uh, going back to your question about what happens if the referendum fails that um, ultimately the RC 14 board is going to have to have a conversation with the building committee what would the structure of a new question be and what things would they continue to ask for what things they would not what remains static in all of that though is the 131 million which includes the purchase price for a piece of land that part I don't see changing for an additional referendum in the next four months. But if it completely fails in six months, you have a zero vote, right? You fail everything. In order to, you would have to redo when the middle school as it sits right now and Manchester, and you would have to redo Raymond Elementary, or, or Jordan Small, at a tune of, Chris mentioned 30 million, all local money. No state money at all. Raymond will never get state money to build a school. But in that case, we would not have to pay for anything in Wyndham, correct? No, you would still pay to yeah. the RSU. Yeah. So we're paying about 11.8 million now. We continue to pay that 11.8 million plus the rebuild of Jordan Small. So, so what's going to happen is if it fails, mm -hmm. it will go back to the, the cost sharing agreement is what it is. So whatever, and they would put it on a priority. Um, and this is, I'm just making an assumption. You're going to do it on priority of importance as far as the school goes and what needs to be done. Yeah. And then we would pay our cost sharing part of it, which right now, it all depends on how many students we have going in there. So ours right now is like about 20% and theirs would be 80%. But there would be no, and correct me if I'm wrong, there'd be no state funding on any of these um, renovations or anything else we have to do that's all going to come out of our pockets. Okay, so we would pay 20% of the revamp of both, both middle schools. Yep. 
total. Yep. No. Well, you'd pay eight, Raymond 80 of be, Raymond, yeah. 20 of Wyndham. Yes. On both schools is what it is. So whatever's being done. They would pay 80 on theirs, 20 on ours, if you're saying they, Raymond, they Wyndham, and us, Raymond, and no. then Raymond would be paying 80% of Jordan Small, 20% to whatever they No, the cost no. sharing agreement is yeah. anything you bill locally, yeah. you pay locally. Right. It, so right. it, Raymond would pick up 100% of the cost of Jordan Small. Yes. Wyndham would pick up 100% of the mid, of their middle school. No, no, wait a minute. So we would no, not for, for, for new build. No. It's anything new build. It's a new footprint. So, yeah. but, so anything that's... Well, renovation is cost sharing. Right. Yes. Any kind of renovation okay. to the current right. buildings right now. So Wyndham Middle School is, I, I'm throwing numbers, numbers out, 10 million. Mm -hmm. Okay, whatever. Ours is 7 million. Whatever they take, the, we pay twenty percent of whatever's being done at Window, and twenty percent of whatever's being done at Raymond over the cost of the bill is what it is. Wyndham would pay eighty percent because there's more people than what we have here in Raymond is what it is in the school system. So right now we we go on, and it changes. It, it can go like a point up percent up or down, but we would be paying the costs of what it would cost to do uh, 39 million, whatever, to cost up here. Mm -hmm. We would pay 20% of that cost sharing and when we would pay 80% of that. Same thing, anything down there, it, it come back as far as a percentage. But the long and short is, you'd probably have a bigger debt to try and refurbish than you would if you go with this new build because of the, you, you're gonna have no state share, which means everything is all everything is all local, even though you've got the cost, you know, the cost sharing, but the cost sharing a, a applies to the to the debt you're gonna take out for the new school anyway. So, you know, so if you're looking at thirty nine million for the for the new school, that's you know, that cost sharing formula takes effect there. If it was gonna be forty or fifty million to refurb, you're, you know, we're, you know, that's what the total bill is because you've got no state, you have no state kick it at that point. So you're now 20% of, you know, 40 or 50 million versus 20% of 39 million. It's a bit of a tricky wicket. I think just to clarify, you were talking about if the referendum lock failed. Lock down Jordan Small and build a whole new school. A new school. So on a renovation basis. It's um, Chris? Yeah. Question. Yep. So I share some of the concerns um, of parents that have, let's say, f um, fifth graders on the same bus as a 12th grader. I don't think that's a good idea. So um, just, I'll leave my, anyway, I won't go there. Um, <clears throat> so what, just conceptually speaking, what would be the options? Could we do High school starts at this time, middle school starts at this time, elementary starts at this time. So essentially there'd be three separate bus runs. Could we do something like that conceptually or run the middle school kids with the elementary, which again, then you've got first graders riding with eighth graders. So that's a problem. Um, but c could there be a scenario where we would have three separate starting times for schools? Yes, there is a possible scenario with that. There's also scenarios where you have your high school, middle schools, and then your express run. High school, middle school start on the same bus. They do express runs. High school, middle school separate them out so that you get kids going to directly to their building to then do drop offs as well. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different ways that districts have done it uh, in order to be able to transport students cost effectively as well as age appropriately or developmentally appropriate. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Caitlin LaCase, Tenny Hill, Raymond. Um, so I just thought I'd share. One, I think this is something reasonable people can disagree with, and I really appreciate the conversation and the questions. Uh, and I just thought it'd be, I wanted to share a little bit about my thought process with it. Um, because I, I support the new middle school, um, and I thought I would just share how I got here. Uh, first, I don't envy the select board and the school board at all. Back in 2021, it was when you had such a short period of time, and you were begging Raven residents to come out and share their views. And that just has to be said, because it is uh, not fair to place this all on you when you are asking for people um, to come out. And it was an unfortunate timing that was placed on us by the state, um, but nobody, virtually nobody showed up at those meetings. And that is a reality. Uh, and 
that's where we are. Um, and that was the time to have, frankly, a lot of these conversations. And I just wish we had had them there because it would have been a richer, better process throughout. Um, and I, I went to those meetings and I have to tell you, I was really, when they started, I was on the fence leaning a pose um, precisely for many of the reasons that were discussed today. I was really concerned about, we were, we were deciding then, we didn't know where it would be. I love our small, small schools that are an eight minute drive door to door, which I have three kids and often they require, <laughs> they require time for me being strung up school. Um, and I was also really worried about that small town feel and the small classes that have been discussed and knowing, you know, my kids walk through the door, they are known by their teachers. I know who to call for what problem. So this is just, I'm just telling you my thought process because I've thought a lot about this starting back in 2021. Um, I, as I thought more about it, I realized, you know, I, we, frankly, and I know not everybody does that, but we go to Raymond already four to five times a week, it feels like, for sports. And that's just our reality. And I couldn't uh, look at my kids with a straight face. And I understand Wyndham. we're all different. We go to Wyndham. We go to Wyndham. Wyndham. Yeah. We go to Wyndham for sports. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> we go to Wyndham for sports. There's no lacrosse. There's no lacrosse in Raymond. Our kids go to lacrosse in Wyndham. Um, Charlie plays uh, travel soccer in Wyndham. Uh, and a lot of their basketball games are, even for us who are playing in Raymond Rec, are in Wyndham. It's just part of what we do. And I couldn't justify, oh, I'll go there for sports, but I won't go there for education. And that seemed, um, that for me, that, that just didn't add up. Um, I also realized, as I think many of us have experienced, we can all call Mr. Howell at any time. We probably don't want us all calling you all the time, but, but we can call Mr. Howell. Our principals know who we are. That, that I just, if that happens now when we're in a different school, I, I just didn't see that changing in the larger, in the larger school. Um, and second, I knew that for me, I would, insist on being involved in the process to make sure that it was the best possible outcome for our kids. So after it passed, um, I actually, I emailed Mr. Howell and said, please put me on the building committee because I damn well wanted to make sure that if we were doing this, that it was going to be the best possible outcome for our kids. And I am of the person believe that that is where we have come given that we were moving forward. Um, so I just thought I'd share that and I also, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that there has been, I'm not trying to come up with a challenger for Jody or Char, but there has been like no, uh, no school board <laughs> people running virtually any year. There's been unopposed people. Have, we've had to ask people to run. Um, PTO almost shut down this year because nobody had volunteers. We had to go beg people. And I just, I really encourage people if you, it is so important that we all have a point of view and we all are engaged with our kids' education like please stay involved after tonight i know many of you are in different ways and i just there are so many ways to get involved and we are looking for people to do that and thank you for those of you who are so that's all i have thank you thank you caitlin anyone else <laughs> Hi, my name is Amanda Lanning. I live on Tenney Hill in Raymond. Um, I have two children, one who is 11 and one who is nine right now. Uh, pending the school opening when it is projected, it sh he should start being attending that school in sixth grade, I believe. Um, I came from a large high school. I graduated with over 600 children in Michigan. Um, I moved here to be with my sister and her husband's family. Um, I looked around a lot of places. I house hunted for six months before I settled here in Raymond. Um, I settled here with my husband and our kids because it was a smaller community. I loved all of the reviews and just everything that the schools offered here with the smaller communities that they have. Um, I love the area. I love what the schools are providing for the kids, especially my son. Um, he tends to you know, be one of the children that gets told he's a little more hyper or active, but he puts his head down and he gets to work and he does all the things he's supposed to be doing at school. He might still struggle a little, but the teachers that he's had have put their best effort forth and they've given him so much. And I've watched him just blossom and grow. Um, and just that little ride that he takes from around the corner to get to my house, he's already ramped up. He's been sitting down all day. He has to be quiet. They only get one recess and then he's made to go sit on this bus and then he has to then sit on his hands 
and be quiet and he can't move. And then you guys are asking us to go all the way down there where he's gonna have an hour plus bus drive on top of whatever he's deemed to go to school for during that day. And then add on homework because my third or my fourth grader comes home. He still has three different lessons of homework. So by the time my child gets home, which will be close to five, if the school hours stay the same, then my kid's gonna come home. He's gonna have homework, then whatever sports we get into. And I'm already rushing to get dinner done and get us out the door to go to our school and sport event we have to get to. And that's if I don't want us to eat at 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. Hmm. There are just so many reasons I feel that this long distance bus drive that they need to go on is unnecessary. And I don't know. I know everybody keeps talking that these were open to us in 21. I feel like this just got like slapped in my face. I had no clue about this. And maybe I'm not educated or maybe I wasn't looking in the right places, but I know I felt very blindsided by all of this when I was told that a location was picked, you know, then I learned, hey, we could have had a place that was closer to here, somewhere more in the middle, but it was just kind of taken away from us. That's how it felt. And so I just feel like so much of this hasn't been given to the Raymond residents, whether or not there was, like you said, there was those meetings. I just, I wasn't aware of them. And I've, I feel like so many other people that I've spoken to have said the same thing. And I just wanna know where was that put out? Where was that information being put out to the parents and to the other taxpayers of the town? Because along with that, I feel like the budget for this is just egregious. Okay, so a couple things there, communication. Um, catch, catch me up from last year. One of the things that the board talked about, I learned that the board has time for two goals in a year. <laughs> Lots to do other than budget, policy, et cetera, and being a touch facetious. The um, communication piece was one of our board goals last year, and our administration had um, their needs as well. So um, PTC fast, uh, Blackboard emails, all the text messages and notification methods have recently been replaced um, by Parents Square. I sit on the technology committee, walked through that process last year that had been in place as a technology to evaluate one of the challenging things um, I think is receiving information from many, many different places. Um, I have five email addresses for different things that I'm participating in and a cell phone and an email, you know, just all the things. And so consolidating the way that our community members as well as parents receive information from the district was really important. And that's a tool that was introduced, um, as you might know, this fall. Right. And I can speak for myself. There's a lot of ding, ding, ding going on from the district just because I have kids in two different schools classes and then we have a school board piece and then there's a sort of out to the community piece. So from that side of things, I can just say communication in a way that people receive information is important and that point's well taken to say, maybe not everybody's reading the paper, but there's a certain part of the population that does read the paper, right? Um, probably goes in the fireplace for, for the most part in some people's houses. There's um, email, which typically gets caught up on when people have time, you know, personal email. It's, you know, like this many, you know, I nobody told me because last week the bank sale, the PTO thing, all the things, right? Um, so email and the way that we receive information, I think was a big gap to close. So back then, um, catch me up, Mr. Howe, we would have done email, we would have done the RSU 14 website, uh, the town website, there would have been uh, the paper. Social media, I, I know I personally, I was on the board then, I personally blasted it to every community group um, in the area that I could find on Facebook, um, including like buy and sell groups for Lake Region and, and said, hey, Raymond residents, um, it, it, it was on the, Raymond Facebook page. It was um, talked about in select board meetings. It was put in the local paper. It went out in emails to whatever email addresses the RSU Listener. had possession of. Um, it, it went on blast um, multiple times. I personally multiple times went to all of these different sites, all of these different groups on Facebook and blasted it out. So I'm, I'm not sure um, how else we could have done it. I mean, I even thought about, should we do a mailer? But then I thought about, what do I do with my junk mail? I don't even look at it, I chuck it. 
I put it in the recycle bin. So I, I don't know what else we could have done um, other than having more time to get the communication out. I think of all of the things that we did, having more time for it to filter through the community would have been beneficial, um, but we didn't have the luxury of time at that time. It's, um, I think the board, I could speak from my, from my perspective, figuring out how people want to receive information is of great importance. Um, but nobody really um, wrings their hands that they're not reading or watching school board meetings. And there's a lot of content. Obviously, the website for this build is, is gigantic. There's a lot of content there. So if there's ways, certainly um, we encourage you to provide feedback. But those are the ways that it would have gone out. It was a tight timeline. In 30 days, this goes really by really fast around here. Right. You know, from September to October, we just went through that timeline. You know, it's gone fast. The year, there's time is flying by. Two I, seasons of sports in every family or transition. I mean, it's... And I didn't expect for you guys to go through all of the hoops that you were going through. I'm just saying, I personally yeah. do not recall seeing anything That's how before. it was for you. It was for me. I, I feel like all this stuff just kind of came up last year. Sure. And then it was like, boom, boom, boom. You know, where did this come from? How did it start? How did we get to this point? And, and that's just how it was for me personally. Sure. And, and some of the people that I've spoken to and have spoke to me about it. Um, and just to go along with some of the people with the bus concerns and the age bracket, you know, my 11 year old came home last week and there was high schoolers playing with condoms on the bus and they were at her feet. And while my daughter does know what that is, because unfortunately there's social media which I don't allow her on. However, she sits on the bus and there's other kids sure. and they talk about this and they talk about that. But my kid that is in sixth grade does not need to be on the bus with the high schoolers. There's no reason for it. So I don't know what routes you guys have been doing regularly, but it would be greatly appreciated. If we could get that to be separated, it would go a long way, I think, for so many kids and so many you know people in general. Okay. Because there's just a lot of additional conversations that I'm even having with my uh, my sure. fourth grader. Yeah, that's a that's a good. I mean, we've had it multiple times tonight. The other piece of it, and the goal is to take some feedback for the full board. Um, the other piece was just your comment on the on the um, the cost of right. the project. Anything else? No, that was it. Okay. Thank you, thank and uh, thank you for being so poised and tactical in your responses. Anyone else? Is there a limit on questions? <laughs> no. no, not tonight. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> still Tom, still from Raymond. Um, so I, I did have one, sorry, I just, I, the thought was sort of going through my head. And again, I apologize since I'm not overly familiar with how all this works, but my understanding would be you're you're asking people to vote on a, a budget number, which is projected. Obviously, you can't sort of guarantee every line item is going to exactly work out that way. So, in the event that certain costs exceed the expectation, then you're going to have to make adjustments to along the way. Mm -hmm. So, can you give us an explanation on like what that process will look like? And because what I'm envisioning is over the next two or three years, mm -hmm. we're gonna have endless meetings about, well, well, we wanna cut the baseball field and they wanna cut this mm -hmm. and somebody else wants to sort of sure. cut that when you start to realize, hey, we're running out of money here and inevitably something in the grand plan is not gonna work out. So how what does that look like and who, who ends up making those type of decisions as we move I, from the, yeah, you know, I mean, I can say reality. it's a terrific question. Um, I can say that there's a uh, 750000 built into the proposed costs on the referendum for unexpected expenses as it relates to just overages that are unaccountable. But uh, the referendum that the voters approve bind RSU 14 to that that ceiling, that limit. So things will continue to um, be reevaluated. Mr. Howell, can you comment on the process as far as what that looks like in your view? And, and uh, maybe it's unfair to ask, but just what your thoughts are on no, and what it's, that would look like? It, it actually would go back to the building committee and the building committee would have to go through a, I hate to use the term, it's a value engineering process to determine what actually gets cut out of the project. Um, there have been escalation factors that have been put in both on the state side and 
demand on the local side. And that's just simply the percentage of local costs versus what state cost is. So that is built in as well. There's about $10 million in escalation that's in there that is in the state formula. The state is a very specific what you need to carry for all these different components. Uh, but Jody's right. This is whatever the voters are voting on as a ceiling on this project. Um, I, in just working with the architect and the engineers, they have done due diligence to determine what the cost is. And um, in all their other school builds, they've not gone over budget. The architect that we've chosen, they've not 50 gone over. years of the company, they've not gone over on any of their oh, projects. Really? Okay. So the build committee would make a recommendation to the school board and the school board would take a, a vote. Yeah, and it would actually, it would not only have to go to the school board, have to go to back to the state school board because it's part of it is their portion okay. um, at which they're going through and they need to make some decisions on. Again, it's a partnership. Would you say that one more time? What would go back for voting versus what's already built in as far as sort of wiggle room and we've sort of made some allowance for potential, you know, material costs, labor costs, whatever. So if, if the project after approval and after bidding would undergo a substantial change, the state of Maine is paying $131 million, so they're paying 77% of this project. Part of any approvals for substantial changes would have to go back to the state school board who authorized the funds on their portion. Significant changes on the local portion would have to go back to the local school board and they'd have to decide whether or not things go in there. A great example is uh, when Wyndham High School was built, $800,000 worth of ledge was discovered out back and so the track went away, which was part of that build project. I don't know what else was value engineered out. Maybe some of the, the HVAC. I was on the building committee 20 years ago when one of my school was done. I do know the track went, as well as um, there were some entryways that were in the original designs and also some sunshades and some other things that were then cut out through that process. But to, you know, one thing that's important to recognize, you know, especially because Chris brought up the ledge issue is, so what happens is you run into the same, what happens if you run into the same issue there? Well, to to get around there, not to get around that, but to make sure that that was looked at, there was a lot more test boring and things like that that was done at the, at the front end to identify those type things that came back and did them in the past. Yeah, that's exactly what got me thinking an hour and a half later, I sort of put two and two together. <laughs> What what becomes a significant overage then? I mean, in other words, what? Um, maybe not an exact dollar number. I mean, what's the idea? Price of steel goes up, or steel isn't available for certain parts of the project. Is it a percentage? In other words, you you can go over the one seventy one by five percent, but once you go six percent, then you it can't go over the one seventy one's a ceiling. Absolute That's hard. There's, you can't not a penny more than that. Not a penny more than that. Without some sort of subsequent vote or whatever right. other procedure. The the actual bond question. I could put it back up there again. Does not allow the RSU to take out bonds in the amount greater than one seventy one five whatever for that amount. Okay, you just you kept using the word significant overage, but. That sort of threw me off tar target. So. Uh, you can't get a certain chair color, so you're going to go with another color and it's a few dollars more. It wouldn't be a significant one. It would have to come out of contingency. If you have steel prices all of a sudden skyrocket and you can't actually get it or you can't get a particular um, a something you can't design into the building, then that would require a change in concept and a change in concept would have to go back to state school board. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Thanks for indulging. Anyone oh, else? Hi, I just have one quick question. Should be really quick. What is the square footage of the building itself? 262,000 square feet. It was a really quick good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. <clears throat> I'll just real quick. And again, I will commend you folks for running the meeting the way you have. I know I was a little bit forward before. It's my personality, and there are just some things that do concern me about my children's well-being, and I'm just trying to speak that forth, and you guys have been very, very good tonight. Really appreciate it. 
Um, just a couple of takeaways. Um, I think some of us in the room is myself. I feel like you're giving us a Denali and we just want a Chevy. And we want a Chevy that's going to stay on the road to academics. Um, I know that right now the boys can go into the girls' bathroom if they choose to identify as a girl or whatever. And is that something that was put up as an additional cost? Because I think this new um, school has separate bathrooms for everybody. That's that's underneath the state cost. It's not an additional cost. But this new school is budgeted to have separate bathrooms instead of right. one. So that's an additional cost. No, so if we it's actually within the plumbing fixtures. Well, I mean, it costs more to build individual stalls than it does to have an open bathroom. Mm, no. Just cost per square foot. But my sense from um, no. voting on this aspect, there were significant conversations around restrooms and how many there were going to be for teachers. The original students. design was to have teachers having one bathroom and then students having, I think, two on teams of 100. And there was a lot of discussion about just teachers need to have more bathrooms. So there were more restrooms, but it wasn't, um, there was never a discussion while I was on the build committee about any local additional for the construction required for individual bathrooms. In fact, when we toured, was it Oyster River or, um, Caitlin, help me, where did we go? Oyster Went to New Hampshire. Yeah, Oyster River. Um, I remember specific conversation we were walking through talking about gang bathrooms versus the individual stalls and the, the school that we were in opted to do individual stalls across the entire school. Um, and just because it gave more privacy, there were less issues that needed intervention for SROs, et cetera, et cetera, uh, behaviorally. Okay. Um also, and well said about transportation this evening, um, I know right now the school is having a challenge with bus drivers. I mean, I see the signs, they're trying to hire them, and um, I'm hearing a lot of concerns, and that's a need. And I don't know what can be done to get more people to, you know, take up that job. It's challenging, but it's, um, it's a kind of a pull and tug in this conversation tonight, so it's going to be given a lot of thought. Um, and... I guess that's about all I have tonight. And I know <clears throat> I had to pay for a tutor this last year, um, and I didn't know if any reimbursement could ever be considered by the IRSU. If there's shown to be a teacher that is not quite uh, qualified to teach a subject she has and can be reimbursed for a tutor, I uh, just want to put that out there. Thank you. Okay. Um, myself, which is my child. <laughs> 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 it wasn't 90% by the way. Anyone else? So I'll, I'll speak for myself. I thought the conversation was productive. Certainly, um, I I knew there was going to be questions we couldn't answer tonight. Um, just the logistics of it are just impossible in some cases. But um, from my perspective, the process that's been it's been a bit confusing sometimes, even being part of it. So I can say that out loud as well. It is um, intricate and it's extensive and the superintendent with the architect have done what is the equivalent of a second job through these last few years and it's uh, even for the board to understand the level of detail um, we just wouldn't be able to understand what that level of detail is so it's been hard for us to track as well trying to keep up with with that um, and then the complexities of the build committee as well have been another layer of difficulty um, i can say one of the things that donna asked about was you know who's representing i think it we've talked a lot about um Raymond wanted a vote and that's been discussed tonight and requested. Um, and also, but but who's representing you are the school board members, the build committee members and your select board. And um, those positions are difficult. They come up fairly frequently and I would encourage people to um, share time in some of those seats if you can, independent of this build, it's just, it's good to, to be part of that, um, you know, business, business owners in the room and parents, grandparents, et cetera. And some people in this room have been here for multiple, multiple builds. So it does create a little bit of apathy. Sorry, Jim. Um, there you go. Call me old again. But uh, the experience um, is yeah. valuable. And if Mr. McClellan was here, if Mike was here, I'm sure he would share the same sentiment, you know, um, the I'm, I'm glad that we were able to put it together. Thank you, Mr. Howell, for um, coming tonight with an open mind. It's a bit of a different forum, uh, certainly. And um, my takeaways, at least, and, and I'll ask the team up here to, to uh, help me, would be transportation, um, 
the concern about putting multiple grades within the same routes, um, the cost and what that referendum process would look like, and um, if the referendum fails to go out and ask people for why maybe they the vote failed or what could we do differently would be maybe important part of that six week process. Um, and just the concern about taxes for the different demographics in town. Um, anything else? Classroom sizes. Class sizes. Mm -hmm. That I feel like we kind of weren't really able to get our arms around. Those are a few things that are, you know, they do weigh heavily on the voter um, for yes or no. Anything else? Well, thanks for coming out. Um, we as a board are hoping to do more topic specific um, forums in general. And if you want to load the Parent Square app on your phone as a new place that dings and makes noise all day, then you're going to hear from the, from the school in that way as well. And so community members, I would encourage them as well to do that. Sue Lopez has another comment. OK. Oops. So Yes, it is um, from Courtney Edwards again. Very respectful and productive town meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Courtney. And if no one has anything else, then I guess we'll adjourn.